I need all my married couples out there to grab your spouse. This is the moment where we just look into each other's eyes and we just appreciate each other. You know, sometimes we got to. Yeah. Real Jews stand up. They want to monetize and traumatize, but this God of mine can make black Semites organized. Black Jesus with the red in his eyes, we make these fake Jews petrified. The Jews are black, is verified. That'll never fly with better guys in Barclays. Role models commentating at the Barclays. With $40 million slaves, play the parquet. So we're positioned like Bishop on Eastern Parkway. We never apologizing. FDADL, not a slave to the NBA or the NFL. Join the gods if you want to be a leader. IUIC to take over, it can't be easy. Yeah. We come to redefine the Flatbush Massive And every passage is red heavy for the masses Oxes and asses, Baptists and fascists Pastors, bastards, ratchets with brass flashes Classes, call me Ben Israel, not Cassius We spit that Smith that blow the cold, blaze your ashes These fake Jews can't tell me nothing now We walk with Jesus until it all falls down yeah. Now, the heat, they panic, they frantic Seeing the span Atlantic Demons are planted in sub-Saharan and transatlantic Republic enemies, they be fearing in the black planet with native indians black spanish slash hispanics doing damage cut souls with the shank of guard we leading souls to eden from the land of nard we put the red and blue flag down purple on we go to war in this prison like a posse john wait and see who takes the vacancy and say and see patiently the saints wait until the day decree tenaciously will we haste to take our place and keep no complacency today till he makes us free freedom from my brothers judah and ephraim we playing fast to heal the legions learn from europeans peons ruling for eons blood type freon doomsday clock the type of time and we on read on any city any town and any country we get busy it be going down on front street with the book and like in brooklyn yo you can't sun me and when and where you see us blitz ain't nothing Funny. Barclay Blitz, cast out myths, resurrecting souls, never saw a rock like this. I'm black like the Christ, they white like kiss. Don't need a pistol when I got two sticks. Sick, cause men are frauds like Shannon, Shaq, Charles, and Charleston. When the frauds come, they dance, man, they do the Carlton. It's not unusual, they prance to advance far, son. Past Mars, my margins will spark arson. Queens to Brooklyn, Harlem to the Bronx. On to Mount Vernon, I can't boot stomps. Queens to Brooklyn, Harlem to the Bronx, on to Mount Vernon, I can't boot stop. Tell Officer Jonah to stop playing, B. Stand up. They want to monetize and traumatize, but this God of mine can make black Semites organized. Black Jesus with the red in his eyes. We make these fake Jews petrified. The Jews are black, just verified. That'll never fly with better guys in Barclays. Role models commentating at the Barclays. With $40 million slaves, play the parquet. So we're positioned like Bishop on Eastern Parkway. We never apologizing. FDADL, not a slave to the NBA or the NFL. Join the gods if you want to be a leader. IUIC to take over, it can't be easy. Yeah. We come to redefine the Flatbush Massive And every passage is red heavy for the masses Oxes and ashes Testing, testing Bastards, with brass flashes Classes, call me Ben Israel, not cash Who's doing the Bishop on deck
salute. Salute down. Let's face Jerusalem. Men of Israel, blow trumpets. Trumpets down. Holy Father, we come before thee, Lord. We come before thee, Lord, because we are the son of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Lord, you have promised us a kingdom. Lord, we come before thee. Then we're going to make a supplication unto thee. We're going to make a request unto thee. Father, we always, we always pray, but this time, Lord, is a special request against our enemy. We want you to destroy all those that's trying to destroy this movement, Lord. All those that put our name into the third uh, hate groups, or whatever that, that, whatever that, 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 that they're trying to establish there. We pray that, Lord, you send your angels to make their life miserable. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, our Father which is in heaven, honor be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as it is in heaven, let it be on earth. Give us his day of daily bread, and forgive us for our sin. Forgive other sins against us, lead us not into temptation, deliver us from all evil. Father, we pray that, Lord, you remove from us all lust, envy, hatred, malice, deceit. Grant us, Lord, with thy wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Bless us, Lord, with the spirit of charity. Put you, put your fear within us, Lord. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, let the whole congregation say hallelujah. 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 Father, heal the sick that is among us quickly and speedily. And bless our food and our strong drink. In Christ we pray, we ask amen. Amen. Men Israel, sons of God, patient saint, sons of God. And salute. Most high Christ bless. Salute. Down. Face sisters. To the honorable daughters of Sarah, we say shalom. Most high Christ bless. Most high Christ bless. Testing, testing. One, two, one, two. Oh, but there was one there, man. Let's start moving it, man. No, man. We need some cushion for the seat, brothers. <laughs> we getting old, man. We getting old. <laughs> oh, praise to the most high. We're here in the building. Brothers and sisters, we're in the building. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah the reason I make it sound loud, I want our Lena to understand that. This is the building where everything begins. And stop. That's right. That's it. Never throw no shot. All right, Captain Shemaya. Talking to you, my brother. That's right. All right. Then Malachi, why are you here? <laughs> well, we're happy to see you, my brother. We got Deacon Aesop on deck. Malachi. Uh, shout out to all the deacons, captains, officers, and soldiers. They're doing a great work, pushing this truth out. Brothers and brothers, don't give up, don't give in. To your sisters or that hold us down, continue to do the work, continue, be our strength. All right? Just be quiet. That's all we ask from you. Just be quiet. Everything gonna be all right. Yeah, we're trying to set it up for Bishop. Yeah, I man, shout out to Bishop Kanai class. Great class, brother. Yeah, we all, yeah, you guys have to understand, man. The Sabbath, man, we bring out the, we bring out the best of what we've been learning all these years. I mean, we're trying to make it plain to your brothers and sisters, man, because we're in the last day. We have to make it plain. We cannot let it be difficult. But as we make it plain, Satan is coming more harder. I always remember that, family. Yes, new level and new devil. Well, that sounds like uh, that sounds like uh, when I first start learning English. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, praise to the Musa. Bishop, come on, man. It's gonna be hot. Your brothers, make sure you got your pen, your notebook is on and popping today. Oh, praise! How are you sisters doing the Sabbath day? Yeah. Brothers, how are y'all doing? Good. We say shalom to our brothers and sisters online, uh, to our friends, to our frenemies, to our enemies. Shalom to all of you. 
Today we're going to talk about, uh, hey, Officer Yosef is here. Oh, yeah. 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 Is he messing something up today? Well, Damn. Well, but whatever it is, man, don't bring confusion up in here. <laughs> <laughs> That's my brother, though. So today's class is entitled Restoring the Image of God in Us. We're going to discuss a few things. We're going to discuss the restoring the image of God in us, our beginnings and end. We're going to discuss overcoming our esteem issues as one of our devoted enemies uh, attributed to us, uh, which are due to white supremacy, how they created us to be. We're also going to discuss where we came from. I'm going to show you the history in brief. I'm going to show you the history in brief on where we were and where we are today. All right. Let's open up with the first image. Yes, put that on the screen. Well, all righty then. Well, looking at this image, you might say, hey, what the hell is that? Well, I'm going to tell you a story. If y'all ever hear me say IUIC is the greatest Israelite movement on earth, I mean that. I'm not saying it out of arrogancy. I'm saying it because it's true. The Most High is using us in a way he's not using any other camp. So here's an example. There's a camp who shall remain lameless, but they were in, they are in, there's a group in Boston, Brockton, Massachusetts, and they have a group here, in, not here, but in Atlanta. And they began to teach all images are evil. I said, all images are evil. They, I said, what about in your dollar bill? They said, oh, I knew you was going to go there. We got something for that. He takes out a dollar bill, and it looks just like this. I said, are you kidding me? He says, I'm, he says all of us do that. He goes into the store to buy some snacks. The owner of the store looks at the money and says, if you don't get your behind out of this store, he said it in Spanish, too. Abby, you know how to say that and get your black behind out of here in Spanish. Say it. Rude. You got to be rude. Quita tu. Quita tu. Quita tu trasero negro fuera de mi tienda. Yes. Así es. Exactly. That's what he said. Word for word. That's what he said. I tell you, you got some, there's some, Israel, some gutter Israelite camps out there. And you sisters, you're welcome to go there. This ain't that type of a movement where we lock you in, lock the doors. Y'all could go. Sisters get mad at us when we correct them, and they end up in groups like this and become sovereign citizens and get locked up the next week. All right. No, sis, she called. Can y'all bail? No, we can't bail you out. True stories. Give me Luke 20 and 24, please. Luke 20 and 24. Let's see if Christ bugged out over money. Who reading for me? Shalom, Bishop. Bishop, Officer Leon. Okay, Officer Leon. Luke 20, verse 24. Was he about to say Bishop Leon? No, no, no. <laughs> I thought I heard something there. No. <laughs> Luke. Bishop, you can read it in his spirit. That's oh, what he okay. was. Okay. Luke chapter 20, verse 24. Show me a penny. Wait, start at 23. Yes, sir. Start at 22. Yes, sir. Yeah. Luke 20, verse 22. Is it lawful for us to give tribute unto Caesar or no? But he perceived their craftiness. Yeah, trying to be crafty, trap them up. Go ahead. And said unto them, why tempt ye me? Show me a penny. Whose image and superscription hath it? The answer then said, Caesar's. And he said unto them, render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's, and unto God the things which be God's. Now here's another image. Of, this one is Vespasian. Okay, this is Vespasian. Why does it say, I just saw a class being taught by Deacon Laba go across the screen. Anyway, you all right, Laba? <laughs> IT, y'all all right. All right, this is Vespasian. Here's a, uh, the, you can see the superscription. Can you read the bottom? Of the yes, sir. It's bronze. It says, it's a terse. Observe. A a verse, a verse. A verse. A verse. A figure of Vespasian. Inscription. Effigy of Vespasian. Effigy of Vespasian. Inscription, Imperator, Caesar, Vespasian, Augustus, Pontifex, Maximus, Tribunica, 
Potestas, Patria, Pater, Consul, Third, Reverse, Judea, Captive. So this is on the other side, Judea, Captive. That's what it says. Go ahead. Seated under a palm tree. So there's a, they have an Israelite woman, a black woman, seated under a palm tree. Go ahead. To the left of the tree, a soldier, Titus. It's, it is Titus. Go ahead. Stands guard. Inscription, Judea, Captive. In the center, Senatus, Consulto. Date 71 CE. So these are images. Let's get the images. These are images. Christ didn't bug out. He just, hey, hand me a penny. Let me look at whose image is this and what does it say? All right. So pay, render to Caesar what Caesar's, but unto God what belongs to God. He didn't bug out over money like right. these some of these Israelite, black Hebrew Israelite camps are doing. I hope, I hope for their sake they've repented and come from there. All right. Thank you, IT. Give me Jeremiah 23, 36. Jeremiah 23, 36. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, and verse 36. And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more, mm -hmm. for every man's word shall be his burden. Every man's word shall be his burden. Go ahead. When you say stupid stuff, go ahead. For ye have perverted the words of the living God. That's always been the problem of our people, perverting the words of the living God. We give them the scriptures. They go to the left of the verse. They go to the right of the verse. How can I manipulate and pervert what this is saying? Go ahead. Of the Lord of hosts, our God. Okay, from there, watch this. I'm going to show you. I'm going to give you an example of perverting the words of the living God. Give me Deuteronomy 4 and 15. I'm just going to give you an example. There are many examples, but this is just one. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 15. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves, for ye saw no manner of similitude of the day. So the Lord is speaking to Israel. You saw no similitude? Go ahead. On the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb, mm -hmm. out of the midst of the fire, mm -hmm. lest ye corrupt yourselves. That's the key. Lest you corrupt yourselves. Go ahead and, and do what? And make you a graven image. And make you a graven image. Come on. The similitude of any figure. So in essence, he's saying, you didn't see any similitude when I came down and spoke to you. And he's saying, don't corrupt yourselves like making an image, the similitude of any figure. Go ahead. The likeness of male or female. The likeness of any male or female. Go the ahead. likeness of any beast that is on the earth. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth. The likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air. Come on. The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground. Mm -hmm. The likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. Go ahead. Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven. And when thou seest the sun, the sun and the moon, the moon and the stars, the stars, even all the hosts of heaven. Now here's the corruption. The next part, read. Should us be driven to worship them? That's the corruption right there. Read, high like that. Read that part again. Should us be driven to worship them? Go ahead. And serve them? Go ahead. Which the Lord thy God have divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. So you, when you keep it in context, he's talking about don't make graven images to bow down, worship, and serve. Does Everybody understand that? First yes, Kings seven twenty nine. The book of First Kings chapter seven and verse twenty nine. And on the borders that were between the ledges were lions, lions, ox, oxen, oxen, and cherubims, angels, images. Go ahead. And upon the ledges there was a base above, mm -hmm. and beneath the lions and oxen were certain additions made of thin so work. So where are all these images at that Solomon made? Jump to verse 51. Verse 51. So, so was ended all the work that King Solomon made for the house of the Lord. So this was the temple. God instructed King Solomon to make images of angels in the temple. Ox in the temple, lions in the temple. And when you read the whole chapter, lilies and various other things, he said, these are the images I want in my temple. You get Israel, some Israelite camps that can't see that and say, no, all images is evil. Mm -mm. But you know what's funny about that? When the images of Caesar Borgia as Christ was out, they never spoke against it. But when we showed images of Christ, the angels, the Israelites, now it's a sin. Now it's evil. Don't do it. Don't do it. That means they have a hatred against our people. That's what it is. I'm sorry, uh, Abiel, the leader of them is Northern Kingdom. The second in command is Northern Kingdom. Air them out. 
Air them out. Yeah, they, they ain't right. They, they, they're damn rotten. Give me uh, uh, First Maccabees 348. Come on. First, First Maccabees 348. Mm -hmm. And laid open the book of the law. The book of the law is the Torah, the Tanakh. The Torah is the first five books of Moses. The Tanakh is the first five books and the prophets and the writings. The old, what we call the Old Testament is the Tanakh. It includes all of it. Everybody understand that? Yes, all right, come on. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Ah, that's a good. Thank you, IT. Y'all on the roll so far. Now, here's an example of the heathen, because the white man is, is a heathen nation, uh, painting over black images to portray themselves as Christ, Mary, the Jews, the Israelites. Do you have the most famous one? Can you put the most famous? Yeah, blow that one up. Enlarge that one. It's like real. Yep, that's it. That's what. They read it again, obviously. Leave that on the screen. And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. Mm, so now, regarding us, you have the faithful among us. You have the zealous among us, the believers and bold. Understand that whether or not we are faithful, we are zealous, we are believers, we don't live forever. But the doubtful among us, the fearful among us, and the unbelieving among us, you don't live at all. That's like a curse on your spirit. Okay? Give me Jeremiah 17, 4. So what happened? What happened to us? Jeremiah 17 and 4. Mm -hmm. And thou, even thyself. Talking about Jeremiah, but what he says to Jeremiah, yes, it goes for him first and foremost, but it also applies to us. Go ahead. Even, and thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine inheritance. So Jeremiah, now when you read the Bible, you read the whole book of Jeremiah, he never discontinued from God's heritage. So this is letting you know Jeremiah would come. Hey, obviously, Leon, 2 Ezra 1. No, 2 Ezra 2. I forgot the verse, but you know what I want, right? Oh, God. Let me go look at it. <laughs> yes, sir. 2 mm -hmm. Ezra 2. 2, 18. 18, very good. There you go. Second Edges 2, 18. For thy, for thy help will I send my servants, Isaiah and Jeremiah and Jeremy, after whose counsel I have sanctified and prepared for thee 12 trees laden with diverse fruits. So Isaiah would come back in the last days and Jeremiah would come back in the last days. Let's go on back now. That's some heavy stuff there. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah wouldn't come back as a mighty prophet in the beginning. He'd come back just like you and me, slothful, sluggish, low self-esteem, who I am. I don't know who I am. Might have been a drug dealer. You never know. You don't know how Jeremiah will come back. So read that again. And Jeremiah 17 and 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. Mm -hmm. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies and the land which thou knowest not. For he hath kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn Forever. So this happened to Jeremiah when he returned, and it's happening to us. Hosea 3 and 4, please. Hosea chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. Hosea chapter 3 and verse 4. So when we will come back and not continue in God's heritage, like Jeremiah would, what happened? Read that off, Zillion. For the children of Israel. For the children of Israel. Shall abide many days without a king. That's centuries. Many days means centuries without a king. And without a prince. Without a prince. And without a sacrifice. And without sacrifice. Go ahead. And without an image. And without an image of who we are, what we stand for. Go ahead. And without an ephod. And without an ephod. That's the breastplate. Go ahead. And without teraphim. And with teraphim. That's small images of like family members and close friends. What we call photographs today, back then we had carved images of a relative that we loved, okay? Mm. So now, let me show you. Let me give you some example of how far we've come. Give me this book. I forgot I had this book. I just happened to be going through the archives. and say, Oh, I forgot all about this book. 
This book is entitled Ancient Jewish Art. So what I want to show you is that we have lost our images, and we've always had images. Um, Ancient Jewish Art. Let's go inside, please. All right. Can you read the bottom part? Yes, sir. Seven burner, thank you, seven burner clay lamp with David and Goliath in relief. Alexandria, one to, third, one to the third century. That's Egypt, Alexandria, Egypt. Mm -hmm. Yale University Art Gallery. All right, let's take a look at it. All right, so you got David on one side, Goliath on the other. Okay, so you got it, two, one Nilote image and one Shemitic image. Give me the next image. Let's read the bottom. Above, the calling of Moses. I'm going to show you all something funny with this. Go ahead. The calling of Moses, the burning bush. Exodus 3, 2 to 6. Below, Moses reading the law. Exodus 14 and 7. Or Joshua reading the law. Joshua. Or Ezra reading the law. Nehemiah. West wall. Portraits. Portraits framing the central panel. So let's go up to the top image with Moses. Now, they said they're not sure exactly who the first one, I mean, the bottom one is. They said the first one is Moses. I want y'all to look at the complexion. Moses is portrayed as a black man. Do y'all see that? You can yes, see the color distinction. But now, they also said the bottom one might be Moses too, but it might be Joshua or some one of the other prophets. Let's look at it. What happened to his color? Mm. This is what they do. This is what they do. You can't make this stuff up. Give me the next image. Let's read the bottom caption. Yes, sir. The sacrifice of Isaac. Beth Alpha. Mosaic pavement. 517 to 518. Now you can see this mosaic. You have Abraham Black with the, the knife in his hand. You got baby Isaac. He's holding him up there. Uh, you got Rebecca. Uh, I mean, not Rebecca. Sarah, I'm sorry. Uh, Sarah right there. Um, you have one of the servants with the donkey. Zoom in on baby Isaac. Baby Isaac, yeah, zoom in. Shout out to Deacon Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> black. Y'all can see the colors black. And you see they got the lamb right there that he used as a, a replacement for the sacrifice. But my point is the image right there, the blackness that has been hidden from our people, not shown in any church, not shown in any school. Okay, give me the next image. Okay, read that. Abraham receives the divine promise. Or Joshua at Gibeon. Genesis 15, 5. Or Joshua at Gibeon. Okay, let's take a look. So, there you go. That's either they say Moses or Joshua. But you can clearly see he's a black man. You all see that? All righty. That's some good stuff to me. Give me the next one. Let's zoom in at the bottom words. Zoom in closer. Read that. Moses saved from the Nile by Pharaoh's daughter. Exodus 1 through 11. West Wall, lower register. Okay, let's take a look at the image. Now you can see the Egyptians there. But what I want you to notice in particular is Miriam holding Moses. Zoom in bottom right. Bottom, yeah, bottom right. Right there. Y'all see that's a black woman with a fro. With a baby. With a fro. Okay? So the Israelites have always been a black people. Okay? Sure, we've, you know, been raped and pillaged by other nations. Sure, that's true. But the original of us have always been black. I'm black and I'm black and I'm black, yo. I'm black. Hey, you, Bishop, you yeah. know what's crazy about that? If we didn't have those images now, that crazy northern kingdom is saying is evil. Right. We wouldn't be able to solidify our stance as the Israelites. Exactly. Exactly. So y'all need to be quiet. You crazy camps. The Lord is moving y'all out the way. You nut jobs, man. You shouldn't be this stupid in this day and age. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Give me the next image. Let's zoom in at the bottom. Read that, Leah. The Exodus. From Egypt, Moses leads the Israelites. The Egyptian army, dro the Egyptian army drowns. Exodus fourteen, West Wall. Okay, West. let's take a look at it. Now you can see Moses clearly a black man. 
He's holding a staff over his head. Look at the Egyptians and the water on the left. That's the Egyptians. The Egyptians are black right there in the water. Look at Moses now. Moses is black. He looked just like the Egyptians. Now look at the Israelites behind Moses. Black men. Do y'all see that? Uh-huh. Give me the next image. Let's get the bottom. Come on, Leon. The Exodus from Egypt, the crossing of the Red Sea, Exodus 14, West Wall. Okay, this is all in Dura Europus. Now, y'all can see the two images of Moses with his afro on his head. On his head. Can y'all zoom in on Moses? Both of them? Yeah. Y'all can see these are black men. Ain't no if ands, or buts about it. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Look at his hands, his fro, his face, black. Let's look you, to the right is the Egyptians drowning, okay, with the jumping fish. Egypt's being drowned. Pharaoh's military to the left are the Israelites, okay, all black. Y'all see that? This is some good stuff. I, when I look at this, I just smile. Yeah, yeah people don't realize uh, uh, the powerful of, of, the, uh, of an image. Because you can sh share that with your children. And, but for, the, for these brothers to make their statement, it's showing you how much they hit themselves. They hit their own people. Exactly. Let's get the next one. Zoom into the bottom. Dura Europus. The Israelites camp in the desert. The well of Bera. Numbers, Numbers 21. Numbers 21. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. All right, you got Moses there. You see the seven-branch menorah. We, we always knew the menorah was seven branches. It's not eight. It's not nine branches. It's only seven. Thanks. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. They'll be following the Amalekites out there, the Khazars. <laughs> Look at Moses. Look at Moses. Look at the 12 of, of the heads of the tribes all around. The black men. Okay. So now, thank you, IT. When you know your worth, nobody can make you feel worthless. <laughs> a lot of our people, we do suffer from low self-esteem. You can see it primarily in our sisters. Well, anytime you see the black woman, she got a permed hair, she got yellow hair, blue contacts, green. You can self low self-esteem. She hates herself, and guess who else? She, if she don't like herself, she ain't gonna like you. You brothers be having a hard time with women like that. Don't matter. Once you see the hairstyle, the eye complex. Uh -uh. Next, go get your passports. Leave these women alone. I'm telling you. Telling you, you're going to have a hard time. Your children are going to grow up crazy dealing with a mama like that. Okay. So, low, low, low self esteem. How do we fix it? One way we fix it is uh, learning our history and the prophecies of the Holy Bible. That builds your faith, that builds you mentally and spiritually. Another thing, so write that down. What helps low self-esteem? Uh, what did I say? Learning your history, the prophecies of the Bible. Build your faith. Build you That builds you mentally and spiritually. Another thing that helps low self-esteem. Now, y'all might not understand this. It's going to sound odd. You'd be like, eh! Proper diet. Proper diet. I'm going I'm to help you out there. You're like, what do you mean by that? You ever see an overweight woman coming to you and trying to talk game? You be like, sit, stop, stop. I'm going to give you a story. Damn. I'm at court, and it was break. They took a break. So I went to the park, and it was a jazz concert. And I'm just sitting there. I got my, 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 my uh, uh, folder with me for the case. I got my Bible. I'm just sitting there. I'm listening to the jazz music. And I see to my right a group of people, men and women. And I noticed... They mind in their business except one. St hey, 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 stand up for me, stand up. You. The sister walks up to me. She's his size. Damn. Thank you. Have a seat. Damn. <laughs> she says, she says, how you doing, brother? I look, I said, I did one of them things. <laughs> Who? I said, I'm all right. She says, I've, I've been seeing you sitting here in the park. You married? I said, yes. She said, I don't see no ring on your finger. I said, that's not our, I said, that's not, that's not our custom, but I am married. So, yeah, 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 she looks something like go. that. You can't make go. this stuff up. Now, 
Hey, find somebody. Find somebody else now. Y'all know, you know what I mean, IT? The opposite side of that coin. So, and you know, when you go through stuff like that, you wonder, what if she was bad to the bone? Would your answer have been the same? You married, brother? I'm not sure. <laughs> Woo! Oh, that's a joke. Yeah, yeah, put that up there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'm not. Some of you brothers like them high yellow sisters. I'm, you know, I like. I like darkies. I like darkies. <laughs> yeah, but that, but anyway, she's good looking. She's good looking. Um, take it off the screen. Y'all getting spirits on you right there, Detroit. He takes me off the screen. You see that? <laughs> Proper diet. I'm going back. Proper diet gives you a better esteem about you. So, brothers, y'all know y'all be stepping to some. Oh, Atlanta, Greenleaf. Sisters, good looking sister. Uh, she's one brother wants to talk to her, and she tells her brother, brother, if you want to talk to me, you have to lose sixty pounds. Ooh. You can't make this stuff up. But hey, it is what it is. Give me tips for eating, please. Tips. Yes, Put that on the screen. Can you read that, Officer Leon? Yes, sir. Tips for eating in moderation. Can you raise it up? I don't want to read all that. Notice, no, no, now, I didn't put this again. Who do they have as the representative for reading? The black woman. Raise it up. Raise it up. Come on, all the way. Was that it? Okay, read the highlight. Read the height. The, raise it up. Yeah, read the bullet points. Yes, sir. Leon. Use smaller dishes. Wow, that's Bible. Go ahead. You'll be less inclined to feel deprived if the plate looks full, even if the portion size is smaller. Make the healthy choice the easy choice. Stock your favorite healthy foods and keep high-calorie, high-fat items out of the pantry or out of sight. Before eating out, look at the menu online and decide what you're going to order. Order first if you are with a group so that others' choices don't influence yours. Eat raw, not starchy. Non, non. So I mean, eat raw, non-starchy veggies as an appetizer at home before going out to a restaurant or party. Do not arrive overly hungry. Check your emotional state. You're most likely to overeat when you're sad. You know this part is for women, because men, we really don't get this stuff. Read that part. Check your emotional state. You're more likely to overeat when you're sad. And depressed. Stressed, bored, or anxious. If you are feeling any of these emotions, do something else to combat those feelings, rather than eating as a solution. Avoid trigger foods. Let's face it. Some foods are tough to eat in moderation. Are you unable to eat just a few french fries or a small portion of ice cream? If you can't control the amount you eat, control how often you eat these foods. Well, all righty then. So that's one part of helping low self-esteem. Okay. Um, next thing, write this down. Working out. Whether it's weightlifting, martial arts, boxing, whatever you do that allows you to phys physically protect yourself and those around you. That gives you confidence okay but if you know you you don't got hands and some pop off in the streets you know god you just pray i pray they don't come over here i'm gonna give you a story this is back in the 80s i was dating this uh puerto rican girl my wife know her. my wife know that she was anyway uh she was, she, was, she was bad. She was bad. She, and this was during the time of, what's that white woman? Uh, lying here, I see it. Yeah, it's a song. Are you hey, why am I talking to you? From Haiti. Uh, time after time, what's her name? Cindy Lauper. Remember she used to dress weird? And that other one, Madonna. Remember she used to dress weird? Anyway, this Puerto Rican girl should dress like that. And wear those those uh, little mini skirts with, uh, what's those stockings called? Fishnet, fishnet. Anyway, I'm walking down the street with her. Boo, doo, 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 doo. A car goes by, and there was, I'd say, about four or five niggas in there. They rise up, yo, 
yo, yo, girl, yo, why are you with that punk? Why are you with that mother? And curse. I was, and I'm like, what? What? <laughs> then I'm like, and I'm like, wait a minute. There's five of them. I'm going to lose this fight. <laughs> you put on the screen. Yeah, she used to always, not like Madonna. Madonna used to wear some other more funky, not so uh, like that, not grunt. She used to wear flat, you know, showy stuff. Uh, thank you, IT. Thank you, anyway. But anyway, you got to know you. You got to know. Give me First Timothy 4 and 7. First Timothy 4 and 7. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. Yeah, she left me for a drug dealer. Damn. Damn. You can't make this stuff up. <laughs> yeah, stay strong, Bishop. Hey, stay I strong. knew that was the Lord. Lord said, get rid of her. She ain't no dad good. She gonna get you killed. First Timothy 4, 7. Yes, sir. <laughs> but refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. See that part right there? Exercise thyself rather unto godliness. Watch this. For bodily exercise profiteth little. He doesn't say it don't profit nothing. He said it profits a little. For I meaning it profits your flesh, your body. Bodily exercise. Go ahead. But godliness is profitable unto all things. Meaning keeping the commandments profit unto all things. Go ahead. Having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Mm -hmm. Give me 1 Samuel 10 and 6. 1 Samuel 10 and 6. First Samuel chapter 10 and verse 6. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. And shall be turned into another man. That's what the word of God does for each and every one of us. And if you have not been turned into another man, you're wasting your time. You're here playing games. You're that brother that's secretly on Pornhub at night. You're that brother that's still smoking weed. You're that brother that's still a whoremonger trying to slip your way in and out of different women's panties. That's you. Read it again. And the spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shalt be turned into another man. Mm -hmm. Watch this. 1 Samuel 15 and 17. First Samuel chapter 15 and verse 17. And Samuel said. This is what Samuel said to Saul. Mm -hmm. When thou wast little in thine own sight. When you were little in your own sight. Meaning when you suffered from low self-esteem. I ain't nobody. I ain't got nothing. Nobody want to talk to me. Read it again. And Samuel said. When thou wast little in thine own sight. Was thou not made the head of the tribes of Didn't Israel? Didn't the Lord raise you up to be king over Israel? Go ahead. And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. So to be little in your own sight, that's the masses of our people. We are little in our own sight, okay? We know we are. I'll give you an example. You be at work talking with your homeboys. Blah, 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 blah. Soon as white folks walk by, everybody get quiet. Oh, yeah, they all go, good morning. Good morning, boss. How you doing? Bought you some coffee. That's what you do. I know. Give me third John verse 2. But we quick, I ain't got low self-esteem. I ain't got a steam. Yeah, you do. It's okay, though. Not knowing your heritage, who you are, where you come from, it adds to that. Being overweight, underweight, not being a pick of the bunch, it adds to that. Yes, sir. Give me that. The third epistle of John, verse 2. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. And be in health. And be in health. Go ahead. Even as thy soul prospereth. Even as thy soul prospereth. Be in health even as thy soul prosper. Was that the whole verse? Yes, sir. Give me Sirach 3119. Sirach 31 verse 19. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. That's what we were discussing when I showed that eating in moderation. That's when I kept saying that's Bible. That's what the Bible says. Read it again, Leah. A very little is sufficient for a man well nurtured. Meaning, for example, one meal a day. You don't need three, four, five meals a day. One meal is sufficient. Good. And he fetcheth not his wind and, mm -hmm. short upon his bed. You don't get gas. You don't have a bad case of gas. <laughs> Give me a Sirach 3729. 
Ecclesiasticus 37, 29. So rock 37 and 29. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing. Don't be unsatiable when it comes to sweets. Dainty thing means sweets. Candy, now ladies. Remember that movie uh, with Halle Berry? She had a little fat son. What's the name of that movie? Monster's Ball. And the little fat boy had uh, Snicks candy bars under his pillow. He had some under the couch. See, he had food stashed all around the house. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all suffer from that. That adds to low self-esteem. Read again. Yeah, put that on the screen. This is some of you. That's some. That was. That's your baby picture. When you was five, you looked just like that. <laughs> uh, 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 Bishop, they look like Malachi. Oh snap! Damn. Where we at? Be not. It says uh, Sirach thirty-seven twenty-nine. Thirty-seven be, twenty-nine. Go ahead. Be not unsatiable in any dainty thing, mm -hmm. nor. Too greedy upon meats. Nor too greedy upon meats. Eating too much sweets and meats is not good. God has given you, this is in addition to Leviticus 11 and Deuteronomy 14, which gives a dietary law. Now he's telling you how to eat. He told you what to eat in Levi Levi Leviticus 11, what not to eat and what to eat, as well as Deuteronomy 14. Now here he's telling you how much to eat. Go ahead. For excess of meats... Bringeth sickness. Brothers, sisters, you eat too much meat, God says you're going to get sick. Get all kinds. You know, too much sweet, you get diabetes. Some of y'all know that. You got numbs in, numbness in your toes right now. Because you lived your life on candy bars. You, you remember that thing you read earlier, Bishop? No, what we was reading about the eating. They're saying that you eat little by little. Like, for example, if you notice today you have a good meat meal, right? And you go on, you know what I mean? Like, especially some of you like to go to a restaurant, especially when you're hanging with the Brazilian restaurant. You see how they got different meal, different meat they bring to you? A day like that, the next day, you don't eat no more meat. Because you eat enough meat for the, uh, you know what I mean, for two days. Mm -hmm. So you have to cut down, go green for that week. You understand? That's you helping yourself for better health. All right? Y'all think we should uh, talk. Uh, to Deacon Abiel about that. <laughs> <laughs> Where we at, Officer Leon? Yeah, that was verse, uh, we had verse 30. So, <laughs> <laughs> Rock 37, verse 30. <laughs> For excess of meat bringeth sickness. So, God is telling you, excess of meat brings sickness. And it's not talking about a stomach ache, it's going beyond that. It literally means sickness. Go ahead. And surfeiting? Surfeiting means excess. Will turn into cholera, meaning like diarrhea, sickness. Go ahead. By surfeiting, surfeiting means excess. Have many perish. Have many died. Y'all see that? Excess of sweets and meats, you will die from that. Go ahead. But he that taketh heed, take heed, brothers and sisters, prolongeth his life. You'll prolong your life. You can listen if you want, but don't pray to the Lord and say, Why, God, am I sick like this? Look, put it on the screen. Yeah, look at it. That's why you're sick. That's why that right there. Okay. So now, so now, when you have a, a someone, they licking their lips looking at that. <laughs> when you have a weak mind and weak body, those are two factors that helps create low self-esteem. That creates bashfulness. That's the scripture's talking about. You want to please everybody. You're just a bashful brother, a bashful. You don't say no because you want to be everybody's friend. That's uh, attributed to low self-esteem. Okay, from there, give me Colossians 1 and 12. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Col Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Giving thanks unto the Father, which have made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, uh -huh. who have delivered us from the power of darkness. The Lord made us an inheritor in, as the saints of light, and he has delivered us from the power of darkness, meaning sin, evil. Go ahead. And hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And he's translated us into the kingdom of his son. Go ahead. And when we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. So by Christ's sacrifice, he's given us forgiveness, redemption, all of the above, so that we can inherit the coming kingdom. Go ahead. Who is the image of the invisible God? Christ is the image of the invisible 
God, meaning the Father, go ahead. The firstborn of every creature. Christ is the firstborn of every creature, go ahead. For by him were all things created. Christ created all things, go ahead. That are in heaven. That are in heaven. And that are in earth. And that are in earth. Visible and invisible. Visible, meaning in this realm, this world, and invisible, meaning the unseen world, go ahead. Whether they be thrones, whether they be thrones, or dominions, or dominions, or principalities, or principalities, or powers, or powers on earth, all things were created by Him. All things were created by Him and for Him and for Him. Give me John fourteen nine. Christ is who we have to pattern ourselves after. He's the first. He's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Everybody understand that? Okay. John fourteen and nine. John chapter 14, verse 9. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so started long? Eight, started eight. Yes, sir. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it, suffi it sufficed of us. So Philip said, Show us the Father. We want to know what he looks like. Go ahead. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? See, there's something Philip didn't understand. I mean, I'm going to tell you something heavy about that. Who created all things? Christ. Christ. He didn't understand that. But he wanted to see the Father. Read it again. Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. He said, you, if you see me, you see the Father. Go ahead. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? And how are you going to say now, show us the Father? That's some heavy stuff right there. That's another level of understanding. Give me Revelation 1.14. Revelation 1, 14. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. Mm -hmm. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Mm -hmm. Meaning afro hair. Christ had afro hair. Has afro hair. Go ahead. As white as snow. Fully white. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Because mm -hmm. he drank wine in moderation. Come on. And his feet like unto fine brass. Now this is his color. Go ahead. As if they burned in a furnace. As if they burned in a minute. He was a dark-skinned man. Not light-skinned, not brown. He was dark-skinned. What the hell is them being ashamed of that? Are y'all crazy? Go ahead. And his voice as the sound of many waters. Mm -hmm. Give me uh, the father in Daniel 10, 5 and 6. The father, man. They, yeah, that's right. You better love that dark complexion. What the hell is wrong with you? If you black, get back. What the hell is this? If you brown, stick around. And if you white, you all right. Remember that? I remember that growing up. What the hell are you trying to say, Willis? <laughs> uh, uh, Bishop, don't bring my old memory. I, that's old memory. <laughs> I tell you. Give me that. And you know what? I'm going to tell you something about men and women. It's a difference. No matter how dark a brother is, he really don't suffer from the color issues too much. Like women do. And brothers attribute that to them. When they want to talk to you, you want to talk, she too black. I hear, I used to hear that all the time. I got some light-skinned cousins. I got a dark-skinned sister and some light-skinned cousins. Now, growing up, the light-skinned cousins, <laughs> when they came to visit from North Kakalaka, when I say all the boys on the yard came running to the house, they all, everybody came because they was bare to the bone. But my dark-skinned sister, they would look and say, she too black. But the, the, you know, I want to tell that story. Let me think. Okay. <laughs> you have to think about something, don't go there. <laughs> Give me Daniel 10, 5 and 6. Daniel chapter 10, verse 5. Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Then I lifted up mine no, eyes. No, no, I want, not that one. I said the father. I made a yes, mistake. Sir. Daniel 7 and 9. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. Daniel. Oh, but you know what? I did tell you the story that my sister married a light-skinned brother from Jamaica. And she was very, very happy. Our old, I was eavesdropping. You know when you little, you listen to your older sister? She's on the phone with her girlfriend. Oh, he's light-skinned. He's from Jamaica. He got wavy hair and hazel eyes. Oh, girl, I hit it rich. Anyway, his last name, let me tell you something. His last name was Black. That's literally his last name. This is funny. It's a true story. 
So on the wedding day, I'm sorry, sis, if you're watching this, don't curse me out, but I just want to tell the story. So everybody's there, his family there, my family there, we're sitting there, this is back in the 80s. So the minister, I'm going to change your name. Let's say my sister's name is Jocelyn. I'll give you that, Jocelyn. He would say, Black Jocelyn, do you accept <laughs> such and such to be your lawful way? So we all looking like this, and we bust, everybody bust out laughing. Anyway, where we at, Leon? I'm, I'm sorry, I just want to tell us, so I apologize. <laughs> Daniel where chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. So Daniel beheld till all kingdoms on earth were thrown down. America, Britain, Germany, France, China, Russia, everybody thrown down. Go ahead. And the ancient of days did sit. And the most high, the ancient of having no end of days, no beginning of days did sit. Go ahead. Whose garment was white as snow. In order, in, in order to sit, you got to have a body to sit. And in order to have a garment, you must have a body to put that garment on. And that white garment, brothers, it was not a sheet. You best believe it was bad. I, when I envision it, I see a garment changing patterns every few seconds. Yeah. That's how I, when I think, I'm like, I got to be bad. It can't be something like we got on and it just stays the same all day. Mm -mm. Every few seconds is different. The hair style is different. Imagine the hair just braiding while you're talking. You're looking at him. The hair's braiding itself. Like, wow, what the hell? That's another level. Because that's what you're thinking. So yeah. you make your... Uh, that's, that's heavy. That's heavy. Exactly. That's fluid heavy. fabric, fluid hair, just moving. Everything. Go ahead, I'll leave them where we at. Verse 9 again. Mm -hmm. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head... The hair of his head? Like the pure wool. The same hair that the sun got, that pure wool hair. From there, give me Genesis 126. You know, you know what's so heavy behind that, Bishop? To know that what God looked like, they build self-esteem. Mm -hmm. That would be. You know, they be messing up their kids. Yeah, they be women be old as soon as the all babies, all black babies have uh, what they call baby hair. You know that slick hair. Mm -hmm. But as we get older, that hair starts to crisp up, mm -hmm. and they go, oh, "He got bad hair now." Mm. And they be trying to force. You ever see these women? They be pulling hair from back here, saying, "It's my baby hair." No, sis, that ain't your baby. That's hair in the back of your head. That ain't baby hair. What the hell is wrong with Bishop, you? Bishop, <laughs> hey, in the islands, I don't want to say what tribe it was. If they felt the baby's nose was too wide, they would put a clothespin on it. Wow. So that they would turn it straight. Me? I'm not making it up. They would look at the baby's nose and put something on the nose to make it straight. Wow. It, yeah, it is true. In Haiti, they do that too. They did Damn. that to you? Some, yeah, some part of it. Because your nose is kind of, you know, yeah, yeah. in there. Oh. Bishop, Bishop, <laughs> Bishop. Now Bishop. Bishop. Hey, Bishop. hey, hey, they, they needed Haiti. to do that to lava, man. No, no, that <laughs> Haiti, that Haiti that did that, that didn't work for me and my, uh, that didn't work for me and my guy. That didn't work. That just didn't wow. work. That never worked for us. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so these are signs of low self-esteem. The only thing that can overcome that is by us reading these scriptures, believing these scriptures. Genesis 126. Genesis 126. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So that, the first man, Adam, Genesis 2, 7. Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Hey, can y'all find me an image of uh, dirt, dust? I mean, dust in the hands, please. Okay? It's very important you teach your children because you don't want, again, especially the girls. They're the ones that grow up with lower self-esteem than the boys. I see it over and over. See, Ephraim, y'all get away with it because you're light-skinned. Y'all got issues, but not as bad an issue as us darkies. I want a white man holding dust. Here we go. You ain't light skin. Yeah, yeah. Bishop, <laughs> Ephraim, Ephraim is not going through it now, but in the kingdom, if they're so, they will go through it. Everybody turn what they're Oh, they're going to be changed. They're going to be changed. So when the Lord said, let us make man and the Lord God form man of the dust of the ground, that ain't the white man. Y'all can see it right there. That ain't the white man. Now put the black image back up. Yes, there you go. That's the same right there. That's how Adam looked. Okay. And from then Adam came. Eve. And y'all know Eve had to be bad. She was the first mother, the first woman created. She wasn't overweight. She wasn't underweight. 
everything was in place and stayed in place. Them things didn't hang down to the knees with times. Mm -mm, they stayed where they was at. She was the first. Thousands of years, that's right. How long she lived? Hundreds, hundreds of years. Give me uh, Ecclesiasticus 17. And they didn't age like we age now. But you know the expression, black don't crack. Well, it was some people do, but not the majority. Where we at, Leon? Uh, what verse, Bishop? Uh, 17 and 1. Yes, sir. Ecclesiastes chapter 17 and verse 1. Uh -huh. The Lord created man of the earth. Uh -huh. The Lord created man of the earth. That's what we read in Genesis 2, verse 7. Proving Adam was what? A black man. <laughs> don't, don't let an a Edomite Christian try to... It doesn't matter what it, it does matter. Because for centuries, you taught us Adam was white. For centuries, you taught us God was white. For centuries, you taught us the son of God was white. So it does matter. There you go. That's some good stuff right there. Okay. Come on. Where we at, Leon? Damn, that's bad. Peace. That's bad. There you go. Right. That's some bad stuff right there. Hey, read Genesis 2 and 7 again. I just want to go read that thing again. Come on, Leon. Quick, Damn. quick, quick, bro. Yes. Genesis chapter 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. That's some beautiful stuff right there. That's it right there. Give me goosebumps. I get chills watching that stuff. That's, That's right. it right, right. there. Yeah. The visual department, the art department, y'all on point. All praises to the Lord. You got you to put, put the watermark on them. Yeah, well, you got to put the watermark on them images right there. Where we at, Oh, Leon? Sirach 17 and 1. Mm -hmm. The Lord created man of the earth mm -hmm. and turned him into it again. Meaning when you die, you return to the earth. Okay, go ahead. He gave them few days. Few days. And a short time. Short time. And power also over the things therein. Hey, Liam, because I don't know where it is. I know it's in Psalms where the Lord cut down our lifespan. It says he gave us 70 years and if by strength he gives us 80. You know what I'm talking about? It's been a while since I read that. It just popped into my mind. Anybody know where it is? Psalms 90? Okay. Thank you. Verse 10. Psalms 90, verse 10. Psalms chapter 90 and 10. The days of our years are three score years and 10. A score is 20. So three score is 60 and 10. That equals 70 years. Go ahead. And if by reason of strength. And if by reason of strength, meaning what? You exercise, you ate right, you did everything correctly. Go ahead. Maybe four score years. Maybe yet, 80 years. Go ahead. Yet is their strength labor and sorrow. Yet is our strength labor and sorrow. Go For ahead. it is soon cut off and we fly away. We fly away. Now let's go on back now to Sirach. Ecclesiastes 17 and verse 2 again. Sirach 17 and 2. He gave them few days and a short time. And power also over the things therein. He endued them with strength by themselves and made them according to his image. So we were made according to God's image. The way we look, never, ever be ashamed. Hey, uh, give me Wisdom of Solomon 13, 2 and 3. We're coming back here. Wisdom of Solomon. Mm -hmm. Wisdom of Solomon 13, I think it is. 2 and 3. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 13, verse 2. But deemed either fire or wind or the swift air or the circle of the stars or the violent water or the lights of heaven to be the gods which govern the world. So some of our people looked at those things, sun, moon, and stars, and said, that's the God that governs the world. Go ahead. With whose beauty, if they being delighted, took If you were so delighted at the sun, moon, and stars, go ahead. Took them to be gods. If you took them to be gods, go ahead. Let them know. Let them know. How much better. How much better. The Lord of them is. The for Lord the, of them is, go ahead. For the first author of beauty hath created them. God is the first author of beauty. Okay, that's right. Created. That's Christ of our Christ. He's the first author of beauty. Okay. He told us what beauty is. He made Adam the black man. He didn't make Adam Asian. He didn't make Adam Caucasian. He didn't make Adam Arab. He made Adam a black man with woolly hair. That's right. Where's that bomb, brothers? Dag gone. Where we at, Officer Leon? See that? They, the first hiccup today. Hey, ain't they black back there? They don't know. 
Sirach 17, verse three, uh, 17, 3 again. Sirach 17 and 3. He endued them with strength by themselves and made them according to his image mm -hmm. and put the fear of man upon all flesh. Put the fear of man upon all flesh, come on. And gave him dominion over beasts and fowls. Mm -hmm. They received the use of the five operations of the Lord. So the five, write this down, five operations of the Lord. Go ahead. And in the sixth place, he imparted them understanding. And the sixth place, he's going to explain what they are. Go ahead. And in the seventh speech. And in the seventh speech. Go ahead. An interpreter of the cogitations thereof. Mm -hmm. Counsel. The what verse you at? That was verse five. Go ahead. Counsel. Counsel. Wait, 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 wait. Read five again. Yes, sir. They received the use of the five operations of the Lord. And in the sixth place, he imparted them understanding. Understanding, that's one. Go ahead. And the seventh, speech. Speech, that's the seventh is speech. The sixth is understanding. Go ahead. An interpreter of the cogitations there. Uh -huh. Meaning the thoughts. Go ahead. Counsel. So these are the five. Counsel. Go ahead. And a tongue. And a tongue. And eyes. Eyes. Ears. Ears. And a heart. And a heart. Gave he them to understand. Go ahead. With all, he filled them with the knowledge of understanding and showed them good and evil. And he showed us good and evil. Go ahead. And set his eye upon their hearts, that the that he might show them the greatness of his works. Come on. He gave them to glory in his marvelous acts forever, that they might declare his works with understanding. We don't mankind, we're the ones that can declare his works, okay, because we have understanding. The animals can't do it. We can. Go ahead. And the elect shall praise his holy name. The elect is Israel. Give me that one in Isaiah. This is 43, 45. Wanna tell us who the elect is? It's been a while. Isaiah 45 and 4. Mm -hmm. For Jacob, my servant's sake. Jacob, my servant. Mm -hmm. And Israel, mine elect. So the elect is the nation of Israel, our people. We're the ones that he gave that to. Go back to Ecclesiastes 17. And what verse was that? 10. 10. Sirach, 7, Sirach 17 and 10. And the elect shall praise his holy name. Come on. Besides this, he gave them knowledge. He gave us knowledge. And the law of life for inheritance. He gave us the law of life for heritage. So that these commandments, these laws was given to the Israelites. Go ahead. He made an everlasting covenant with them. Hey, you know what I want? Just popped in mind. Give me that one in Baruch 3. How he found out all the ways of knowledge. Okay, Baruch 3, 36. That's it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Baruch chapter 3, verse 36. He hath found out all the way of knowledge, and hath given it unto Jacob his servant, and to Israel his beloved. So he didn't give that knowledge to all nations on the earth. Right. He gave it to our forefathers. Okay, everybody understand that? Yes, and that precepts with Psalms 147. Get that one now. Psalms 147, 19 and 20. And don't let these Edomites tell you you can't read the book of Baruch. It's not canon. Who says it's not canon? Because we say it is. That's right. The hell is it? Who are you? I'm going to listen to your damn slave master. Get the hell away from me and shut your... That's why you can't sit down and, and have no debates with them. All they do is talk, 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 and contradict everything. Get the hell out of here. Where we at, Leon? Psalms 147, 19. Mm -hmm. He showeth his word unto Jacob. That's right. That's his, the scriptures. Uh -huh. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord. The other nations don't know God's judgment. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. That's only been given to us. And hey, you know I what's happening? Okay, okay. I guess David was racist, huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> David said, praise ye the Lord. Uh -huh. Hey, you know what? He said he showed his word unto who? Jacob. To Jacob. Give me the, here's another precept for y'all. John 17 and 14. This is Christ speaking right here. John chapter 17, verse 14. I have given them thy word. Why? Because he said he showeth his word unto Jacob. When Christ came, he only gave the word to the Israelites. That's right. Okay, read it again. I have given them thy word. And what happened as a result? And the world hath hated them. Meaning all the other nations have hated them, including our wicked people that assimilated with the other nations. Go ahead. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Let's go on back to Ecclesiastes 17. Now, now what verse was we at? 
Read that verse 10. Okay, verse 10 again. And the elect shall praise his holy Come name. On. Beside this, he gave them knowledge. He gave us knowledge. And the law of life for inheritance. And the law of life for heritage. Come on. He made an everlasting covenant with them. He made an everlasting covenant with us. And showed them his judgment. And showed us his judgment. That's what David said. Praise the Lord for that thing right there. Go ahead. Don't yep. be ashamed of that. Don't have no low self-esteem for that. Are y'all crazy? Go ahead. Their eyes saw the majesty of his glory, uh -huh. and their ears heard the glory of his voice. That's right. And he said unto them, Beware of all unrighteousness. The Lord warned us of all unrighteousness. Come on. And he gave every man commandment concerning his neighbor. He taught us how to deal with our neighbor. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. He taught us that thing. Come on. Their ways are ever before him and shall not be hid from his eyes. Go ahead. Every man from his youth is given to evil. Now, I want to pause right there. Every man from his youth is given to evil. Once you understand that as a parent, don't sleep on your kids. I don't care how cute they are. God says every man from his youth is given to evil. And it starts with something so simple. Like if you take a toy from a child, that child gets what? Oh. Mad! They will cry, have a tantrum. A child will see another child playing with something, drop what it's doing, and go over and try and take what they got. I got That's all evil. I got you got something? It ain't long, is it? No. All right. Come on. What you got for me? You ain't got it yet. Read it again. You know. Every man from his youth is given to evil. Once you understand that, you know how important it is to start to teach your children from when they're young. When they can understand, like, from the age of five, they can start talking, right? You start teaching them slowly but surely, okay? Don't wait till they're 15. It's too late. You found it? Yeah. You sending it? Yeah. You already sent it? Yeah. All right. Read again, Officer Leon. Every man from his youth is given to evil. Mm -hmm. Neither could they make to themselves fleshly hearts for stony. All right, we got stony hearts. Our mind is stony means sinful. Fleshly means we keep in the commandments. You can't make that, okay? Only the Lord can change and do that thing for us, okay? Y'all got something that Abiel sent, Captain Abiel sent? Okay, let's take a look at it. This is how the kids are if you don't correct them. But it, it's, a, it's a twofold uh, message. Okay. I thought that was a woman. That was left field. <laughs> Twofold. Hey, give me that, that, uh, <laughs> uh, Obsidian, Ecclesiastes, um, uh, let me see what I want. Chapter 40, Ecclesiastic, Ecclesiastes chapter 40 and verse 1. Sirach, chapter 40, verse 1. Pay very close attention. Great travail is created for every man. So great travail is created for every man. Go ahead. And a heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam. Come on. From the day that they go out of their mother's womb to the day that they return to the mother of all things. The mother of all things is the earth. Go ahead. Their imagination of things to come and the day of death trouble their thoughts and cause fear of heart. Mm-hmm. From him that sitteth on a throne of glory. From the king. Unto him that is humbled in earth and ashes. Read. From him that weareth purple and a crown. Unto him that is clothed with a linen frock. Wrath and envy, trouble and unquietness, fear of death and anger and strife. And in the time of rest upon his bed, his night sleep do change his knowledge. So put that on the screen. We all, so this is a. A famous expression, the hard times create strong men. When you, 
Every man is given to travail. That is meant not to destroy you, but to create you into a strong man. Hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Because when you become strong, you make it easier for the next generation. But then it says, good times create weak men. That's when you get, you ever see those kids that are, what is that expression? No, when you feel you owe them something. Entitled kids. Good times create weak men because they feel entitled. Go ahead. Weak men create hard times. It's like a cycle that keeps going on and on. Give me a second as you're seven and six. Second Ezra 7 and 6. Yes, sir. Second Ezra chapter 7 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. There is also another thing. A city is building and set upon a broad field and is full of good things. So this is a, a metaphor for the coming kingdom, the kingdom of heaven on earth. Go ahead. The entrance thereof is narrow. It's a way to get to the kingdom. There's a narrow walkway. Go ahead. And is set in a dangerous place to fall. Mm -hmm. Like as if. There was a fire on the right hand. It's like it was a fire on the right hand. Go ahead. And on the left, a deep water. Deep raging waters is dangerous. That's what chapter 40 in the Ecclesiastes was talking about, the great travail. Go ahead. And only one path between them both, mm -hmm. even between the fire and the water. Come on. So small that there could but one man go there at once. Mm -hmm. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it. If you never go through the hard times that God has set up for every man. Go ahead. How shall he receive this inheritance? How can you get the kingdom? Go ahead. And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion. So the Lord specified. He says, this is what I, what I made specifically for the Israelites to go through hard times. That's what these captivities is about. Okay. For us to fight our way to make it to the coming kingdom, New Jerusalem. Go ahead. Because for their sakes, I made the world. The world was made for the Israelites. It wasn't made for all nations on the earth. Go ahead. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was the creed that now was done. And that's the way the Lord set it up. He wanted it that way. Okay. From there, give me 2nd Ezra 7, 17. Verse 17. Then answered I and said, O Lord, that bearest rule. Thou hast ordained in thy law that the righteous should inherit these things, but that the ungodly should perish. So that's what God's law said. The righteous shall inherit good things, that's the kingdom, but the ungodly among us shall perish. Watch this. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things. The straight things that we mentioned above and in Sirach 40, the righteous shall suffer straight things. Go ahead, like tribulation, which is to come. Go ahead. And hope for why? We're going to hope for that coming kingdom. Go ahead. For that's they faith right there. That's faith. Go ahead. For they that have done wickedly have suffered the straight things. The wicked Israelites, they've done wickedly, but they also have suffered straight things. Tribulation, go ahead. And yet shall not see the wise. And yet they shall not see New Jerusalem. Mm. Okay. I don't know why some brothers say you can break all God's laws and get the coming kingdom. Be born as a baby. In a, that's not in the Bible. Okay. You could be an adulterer, a whoremonger, child molester. As long as you... Don't take a microchip. You can get the king. I'm like, that. no, stop. That's not Bible. That is not Bible. It makes no sense. Read that. Yeah, that's retard. You stuck on stupid. Read that again, verse 18. Nevertheless. You level three retard. Right? Damn. Nevertheless, the, uh, the, excuse me. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for why. But they that have done wickedly. Have suffered the straight things and yet shall not see the wise. You shall not see the kingdom. You ain't getting the kingdom. From there, give me Romans 5 and 3. So, what we go through is making us into the image of God. Okay, because we've fallen from that. Sure, we might have eyes and ears and all of that, but in order to make us into the image of the Son of God, we got to go through hard times, we got to go through trials and tribulations. Liam, where we at? Yes, sir. Romans chapter 5 and 3. Mm -hmm. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. We glory in tribulation also. Go ahead. Knowing that Well, you know what? And that's heavy because we, go, we got various tribulations. But what Paul is really saying, let me give you the precept. Give me Acts 5 and 40. And we're coming right back here, Liam, so don't drop it. Acts chapter 5 and verse 40. 
And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them. And what? And beaten them. They beat the hell out of the apostles. Go ahead. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. It was done back then. Guess what, brothers, sisters? Is we're coming to that time now. Go ahead. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing. What? That, rejoicing. What? Rejoicing. Rejoicing. That they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. You see what that glory and tribulation is? When you understand why you're going through what you're going through, sure, it, 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 it infers or implies all the other things we go through our daily lives. But the main focus of the rejoicing is when we're suffering for Christ's sake. Now watch, here's the flip side. First Peter 4.15. Don't drop Romans. We're coming right back there. First Peter 4.15. First Peter. Let's start at 14. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 14. If ye be... Actually, let's start at 12. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I just happened to look and I said, I like that. Go ahead. First Peter chapter 4 and 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial... Which is the trial. We, the fiery trial is what we read in 2nd Ezra 7. The fiery trial especially is what we go through when we repent of our sins. Go ahead. As though some strange thing happened unto you. Don't they, hey, wait a minute. Why am I suffering? I repented as an Israelite. I'm keeping the commandments. Bad things keep happening to me. Don't think it's strange. It's meant to help you. It's meant to build your character. It's meant to destroy that low self-esteem. That's what trials and tribulations do for you. It builds you into the image of a man. Go ahead. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. Why? Why, Jesus Christ? Why am I suffering? Something wrong. You ain't reading your four chapters a day. That's what's wrong with you. Go ahead. But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. You see that? And rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, go ahead. That when his glory shall be revealed, when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. We're going to be glad with exceeding joy because we're going to understand perfectly why we went through that thing, go ahead. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye. You're not an Israelite. You're not the people of Christ. They reproach us. You're an anti-Semite. You're a racist. We are reproached for being followers of Christ. Everybody understand that? Go ahead. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. You see it? The spirit of God and glory rests upon us. Go ahead. On their part, he is evil spoken of. On their part, the Lord is evil spoken of. Go ahead. But on your part, he is glorified. On our part, the Lord is glorified. Go ahead. But. But. Listen good to this. Let none of you suffer as a murderer. There should be none of you suffering. Talking about, oh, I'm suffering because of, uh, for Christ's sake, because I'm a murderer. No, no, bro. You got the wrong. That's all I want. If you got crazy brothers in the Israelite camps, they got to go. If they're plotting any type of murder, espionage, whatever, they got to go. Read it again. But let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief. Or as a thief. Or as an evildoer. Or as an evildoer. That covers a whole litany of things. Go ahead. Or as a busybody in other men's matters. I'm being a busybody in everybody's business. Go ahead. Yet... If any man suffer as a Christian. The word Christian means the anointed. If any man suffer as the anointed. Go ahead. Let him not be ashamed. Never be ashamed of that. Go ahead. But let him glorify God on this behalf. Let's go on back, Liam, to Romans 5. Romans 5 and 3. Rome, and not only. Wait, 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 wait. I ain't get it yet. I'm slow. Romans 5 and 3. Go ahead. Romans 5 and 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. So we understand what the tribulation is meant to do. It's meant to build us as the Israelite man, the Israelite woman. Make us into the image of God. That's what it's meant to do. To restore to us from what we've lost. That's what it's meant to do. It builds morals. It builds character. It builds esteem. That's what troublous times causes. And it's things that just come out of... It ain't troublous times that you cause cause out of stupidity. Or I, I robbed somebody and now I'm in jail. It ain't talking about that. Okay? Read... And read not, again, read again, read again. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. The trials and tribulations you go through worketh patience. I'll give you another example. I'll talk about sex for a second. You ain't had none in a mighty long time. 
and you being you 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 are being disciplined because you know that woman that you think is okay. You it's something in your spirit saying she ain't right. On the other hand, you got the other brother who's just slinging his willy everywhere. He just slinging with this sister and that sister. Now he caught HIV, gonorrhea. No. See, brother, you, the brother that's disciplining himself, he's going through tribulation. That's, some, that's another level of tribulation. It's been a long time. You going through tribulation because you got AIDS, gonorrhea, herpes simplex 27 because you sweet dick willy. That's how you want to be. Now you're catching it. You that dude, the evil dude we read about in the book of Peter. Don't rejoice over that. You suffering because of your evil. Read it again. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also. This knowing. is that righteous tribulation. You catching hell because you in this truth, keeping God's commandments. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. That works patience in us. It teaches us patience. Go ahead. And patience experience. And that patience in this truth teaches us, it gives us experience. A lot of us don't have no experience. I got a lot of experience. No, that experience you talking about is when you was in evil. That ain't what the Lord's talking about. He's talking about experience keeping God's commandments. Some of us have never been nowhere except around the corner. But when you come in this truth, we go into this country we've never thought we'd ever be. Think, think about it. Where if you wasn't in the military, and when you go to the military, you're traveling here and there, but you don't know what to look for. Brother say, I went to uh, Dura Europa. Did you look at such a... Well, I didn't even know that existed. But in the truth, now you know where to go, what to look for, what to see. Yeah, Bishop, in the world, you're looking at you're looking at all your way to do sin. Mm -hmm. I mean, where the pretty woman? Where, where this, that's right, all your right. mind is on. Yeah. But in the truth, you're looking for things to edify the brothers, to edify the sisters. Exactly. exactly. In this truth, you've gone places you've never been gone. You would have never gone before. Meeting people of all types of nationalities and backgrounds, our people I'm talking about, hearing languages you never heard of before except on TV. Okay, read that again. And patience, experience. That's where your experience comes in. Now you're seeing situations in the body when you're meeting different Israelites, okay? And the things that they're going through, you're able to counsel because you have gained experience, right? Okay? And experience, hope. And that experience that you've gone through gives you hope, go ahead. Okay? And hope maketh not ashamed. That hope, again, strengthens your faith, go ahead. Okay? And hope maketh not ashamed, go ahead. Okay? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. All right, let's go to 1 Kings chapter 2. So we have to be restored to the image of God. And that's not just uh, physically. That's mentally and spiritually. 1 Kings 2 and 1. I mean, second, yeah, 1 Kings. I hope that's the right one. The one with David talking to Solomon. 1 Kings chapter 2 and 1. Now, the days of David... Drew nigh that he should die. So David was about to die. Go ahead. And he charged Solomon his son, saying, Go ahead. I go the way of all the earth. Meaning I'm returning to the earth. Meaning ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Go ahead. Be thou, be thou strong, therefore. Notice what he tells his son. Be thou strong, therefore. And show thyself a man. And show thyself a man. The question is, how? How? Watch the next verse. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. That's the image of God. And keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Go ahead. To walk in his ways. To walk in his ways. To keep his statutes. To keep his statutes. And his judge and his commandments. And his commandments. And his judgments. And his judgments. And his testimonies. And his testimonies. As it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest, and whithersoever thou turnest thyself. That's how you're made in the image of God. That's how you, you understand that? I hope everybody understand that. You question the sisters. I don't know how to make them chain them in a man, make them a man. You got to follow the, the laws of God, okay? From there, give me Job 28, 28. That's what the Lord is looking for from all of us, to be made in his image. Right now, the, av the, the, the typical Negro, Latino, we're in the image of white supremacy. We ain't no bad low self-esteem. We want to have sex with every woman on earth. We want to do drugs. We want to steal. Yeah, bring me a vagina, girl. Give it to me. Give it to me. That ain't the image of God. That is not the image of a nigga. That's what the white man created you to be in his laboratory called Babylon the Great. That's how he manipulated our minds and spirits to be. Job 28, 28. Job chapter 28 and verse 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And you see that? 
the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Go ahead. And to depart from evil. And to depart from evil. Is understanding. Is understanding. A lot of people say they got understanding in the world. You mean people, I got understanding. But if you have not departed from wickedness, from evil, you lack understanding. What verse you at? That was verse 28. Go ahead, read it again. And unto man, he said, behold, mm -hmm. the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Now give me Job 32 and 8. Job chapter 32 verse 8. Start at 7. I said they should speak. Because you got a lot of people with a lot of days under their belt. Go ahead. And multitude of years should teach wisdom. You got a lot of years. Or you got 80 years old. So you, it should have taught you wisdom. Go ahead. But. There is a spirit in man. There's a spirit in man. And the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. That's the Holy Spirit. Go ahead. Great men are not always wise. You can be a president. You can be a prime minister and not be wise. Go ahead. Neither do the aged understand judgment. You ever be on the street and you meet an old dummy? This brother is 60, 70, 80 years old and dumber than a rock. It's like, what the hell is you? What have you learned all your life? You've learned nothing. How have you survived? He arguing with you. And you got to tell these older brothers, these older sisters, y'all should be on this side teaching us younger ones. But it's not that way. It is not that way. Job 34, 34. Job 34, verse 34. Let men of understanding tell me. Job said, I only want men of understanding to talk to me. Go ahead. And let a wise man hearken unto me. And I me. want a wise man to listen to me. His whole circle, he wanted wise brothers around him. He didn't have time for that dumb brother. Okay. Do you brothers got to be the same? Some of you hang around dummy. You know that brother which was a dummy. He don't know scripture. Well, he say the stupidest thing. But you, hey, he my friend. Well, you're going to be just like him. Just give it time. Give me Proverbs 12 and 8. Sisters, too. Hang around that whole sister. You know she ain't no damn good. Where the, where, where the, say it on the mic. You know, he know everything about the sports, the stats, the, stats, the <laughs> games, who won, who's in the champions, but he knows nothing about the scriptures. Exactly. That's who the bishop is talking about. Yep. I can't, brothers like that, don't hang around. Don't, you can't come around me. Go, go, go. Go play Skelly somewhere. Where we at? Proverbs 12 and 8. Proverbs 12 and 8. Go play in traffic. <laughs> a man shall be commended according to his wisdom. You hear that? Sisters don't understand that. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom. Go ahead. But he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. You see that? But a perverse heart, he's going to be despised by who? By God in righteousness. But sisters love that type of brother. Not these righteous sisters here. But if you notice, a lot of our sisters... They love that perverse-hearted brother, Pookie and Ray Ray. That's who they look for. You two, once one sister said to the, the brother, he too nice. He ain't my type. But what the, what? This sister sat here for years and learned nothing. You can't make this stuff. She must be on Pornhub every night. <laughs> Give me Psalms 1 and 1. True stories. Psalms 1 and 1. Psalms chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. You can't sit around in the counsel of ungodly men. Don't hang around spirits like that. Read it again. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, mm -hmm. nor standeth in the way of sinners. You can't stand in the way of sinners. The br brothers and sisters you hang around with, they can't be in a sinful nature. Don't hang around with them. That's what, that's what David is teaching us, right? Okay? Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Nor sit in the seat of the scornful. They always scorn what the scriptures say. Go ahead. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. That's who I want around me. When your delight is the law of the Lord, that's who must be in my circle. I only want brothers like that. I only talk to sisters like that. Read it again. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. That's right. From there. From there. Give me Ecclesiastes. 12 and 13. You're not a man. You're a boy. You're a Negro. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13. Let us hear 
the conclusion of the whole matter. What's the conclusion of the whole matter? What is this Bible about, right? Fear God. Fear God. And keep his commandments. And keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. That's the conclusion of what the Bible is about. Okay? That's what the whole Bible in essence, the message for us is. Keep the commandments. That is our whole duty. From there, give me Bell and the dragon and the apocrypha. Bell and the dragon. And we want chapter, verse 33. I'm sorry. Bell and wait, the wait, wait. Everybody ain't got it like me. I ain't been there in so long. <sighs> If you, oh, got here the, we go. if you got the apocrypha, it's a page 111. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to read verse 33 to 39. Verse 33. Now, there was in Jewry a prophet called Habakkuk. Now, real quick, give me Jeremiah 52 and 16. We're going to come right back here, Liam, so don't drop it. Jeremiah 52 and 16. Watch this. Jeremiah chapter 52 and verse 16. But Neb Nebuzardan, the captain of the guard, left certain of the poor of the land for vine dresses and for husbandmen. Right. So they took, when you read about what the Babylonians did, they took the top, the cream of the crop of the Israelites. The poor Israelites, they said, now, nah, let them stay in the land. And take care of it. But we want the princes. We want the elite. That's what they did. Mm. Now let's go back to Bell. Bell and the dragon, verse 33. Now there was in Jewry a prophet called Habakkuk. So it's obvious Habakkuk was not dragged to Babylon by the Babylonians. He was not one of the elites. Mm. He was the poor. Go ahead. Who had made pottage and had broken bread in a bowl and was going into the field for to bring it to the reapers. Mm -hmm. He but was the going to feed the workers. Guess that? Yes, sir. But the angel of the Lord said unto Habakkuk, Go, carry the dinner that thou hast into, ba into Babylon unto Daniel, who was in the lion's den. So you got to imagine this. Angel comes down and says, Hey, that food that you just made to give to the reapers over there, the, the, work, the men working, I want you to go to Babylon and give it to the prophet Daniel. He was one of the elites, the princes of Israel that was taken. Go ahead. And Habakkuk said, Lord, I never saw Babylon. Neither do I know where the dead is. So now he's making excuses. What are you talking about? I never seen Babylon. I don't know the direction. I don't know what you're talking about. Go ahead. Then the angel of the Lord took him by the crown. Ain't nobody got time for angels. Ain't nobody got time for that. He snatched him by his hair. Read that again. Then the angel of the Lord took him by the crown and bare him by the hair of his head. And through the vehemency of his spirit set him in Babylon over the den. Now, I'd love to see that. Illustrated art department, that'd be some good stuff. Getting snatched by your hair. See, the, the, when the Lord sent his angels, they don't got time for Negroism. I got an excuse of why I don't have to do it. Ah, ah, hey, Bishop, that's that's very heavy right there that you just brought up because that goes into us being transformed into, into the image of Christ. Okay, it's also us doing the work. Okay, you see what they, you saw, a buck up, they don't want to go to Babylon. He start making excuse. It's the same thing with some brothers in this walk, in this shoot. You know, you're all going to make excuse to do the work. I don't know where Babylon is. I got to, I don't want to go over there. I don't want to go to this place. You know, I don't want to go teach here. We might, you know, you all can, we, we can't make excuse. We got to transform ourselves to the image of Christ. Okay, the Lord warned us. What, what we here for, brothers? We here to teach the gospel of Christ. Okay, that's why we here. And the Lord commanded us to prophesy. Okay, to come on this earth and prophesy. We can't make no excuse. Oh, I'm up under my wife. Oh, I'm my job. And this and that. The Lord don't care about that. You know, that job, he going to take it from you. He going to force you to do what he wants you to do. That's basically what happened with the Habakkuk. The Lord forced him to do what he was sent to do. It's going to be the same thing with every last one of us. Those of you brothers that got excuses, making excuses, God is going to force you. Even though with, with Ezekiel, he saw what the Lord did with him. He said, I'm going to kill your wife, man. 
You love her too much. I want you to do my work. You lie on in the house with your damn woman. <laughs> Cuddling and, you know what I mean? And, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Lord said, I'm going to kill her. And you better don't cry, man. Yeah. That's how the Lord rolls. So you mm -hmm. men, you all get better understand what's your mission on this earth. We were sent to tear down the evil and the wicked on this earth. To prophesy again this wicked king. Nobody going to do it but us. So you all know your mission, man. If you don't want to do it, the Lord is going to force you to do it. Yeah, yeah, you know what's so heavy. Or kill you. Yeah, 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 Bishop, you know what's so heavy behind that? Brothers love wink. But when it's time to say, brother, we need you in Africa. No, nah, no, nah, you know. Uh, Bishop, I love you, brother. But, uh, <laughs> but to showing you that the example that we just showing some brothers is not they ain't built for that but the Lord gonna force you to do that because that's what you came here to do like D just said but that's why we tell your captain to step your game up it's gonna be where that's bro you got to pick up your wife kids go over there that's where we need you right now that's right. or give you a wink up <laughs> hey I'm glad you said it or give you a wink up because there's too much work that needs. There's a brother, he, re he, uh, he retired from the military. And he was so happy. He tells me he makes, on the pension, like four Gs a month. I said, well, that's good, bro. I said, that's good. He said, yeah, but I want to get another job. I'm like, eh. I'm like, what? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know when you, get, when you get money and then you make more money, that's more what? Bills. I said, bro, do you understand the mission? We need people in Puerto Rico. Dominican Republic, Jamaica, the Bahamas, uh, the five countries that we got schools in, in Africa, uh, Jamaica, Trinidad. I said, you don't realize we need help in these places? The Lord has freed you up and you want to burden yourself with another job? I said, you don't understand what proof is about. You don't understand, okay? And that's the message we're putting out to all of you men coming up. We need men, and you ain't got to be there for years, three months here. Three months there, maybe five months. If you can do a year, all praises to the Lord. Okay. Yeah, Bishop, that's the brother that still have a mind of Babylon. Yes. Hey, Bishop, there's people who call us, and when I give them the address to the school, they go, that's too far. Okay? And I watch women and children come here in the cold, in the snow, in the rain with their kids on the train. Then you got some brothers who don't come here because they say, they don't want to waste gas. That's too much gas. So I'm being specific about who we talking about. I'm being specific about who we talking about. You saw how the angel snatched him up by his head. You know when the people saw him later, they was like, yo, what happened to your hair right here? <laughs> <laughs> a whole chunk was missing. <laughs> he was walking around with a ball spot. <laughs> Some of y'all need to get snatched up because y'all full of it. I'm hearing people saying, I'm not coming because of the gas. I don't want to take the train. I'm, we're in the Bronx. They in Brooklyn. Oh, that's too far, brother. But to go to the Barclays Center, a game or a family reunion, they traveling. You fake. Yeah, 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 Bishop, some of them left when your guys sent me to Haiti. Oh, yeah, they left? Yeah, yeah. The, the angel said, you got to do that. <laughs> hey, hey, brothers, what is your occupation? Prophets, your occupation. This is our occupation, the scriptures. This is our real job, mm -hmm. learning this and teaching it. This is our real job. That's right. That other job we got, that's just some so we could pay the bills and mm -hmm. that's part time. Right. This is our real job, brothers. Right. And we got to come to that level of understanding and take our job more serious. Okay, this goes for all of us. Okay, exactly. Hey, regarding brothers that make excuses, give me that in Matthew 12. 42. The Lord don't like excuses. Now, he forced Habakkuk to do what he want. He forced uh, Ezekiel to do what he want. He killed his wife. He forced Jonah to do it. Now, those men were elect men. And he forced them. Now, I'm saying that to say this. You might not be an elect. You might not be as beloved as God loved Habakkuk uh, Jonah and Ezekiel. Watch this. Matthew 12, 42. Matthew chapter 12, verse 42. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation. The queen of the south is the queen of Sheba. What is he talking about? Going to rise up in judgment and condemn this generation. He's going to explain it. Go ahead. And shall condemn it. 
For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth. She came from the uttermost parts of the earth. Some books say Ethiopia. Some say the southern tip of Saudi Arabia, where some Ethiop where Kush where Kushites lived. Go ahead. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Do y'all hear? Y'all understand what that means? Christ said, "I'm greater than Solomon." And the queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, the Ethiopian, came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. But you won't come here, and you right there. You right next door. It's too far. You, you too far. Uh, where the school at? Uh, it's too far. The Lord ain't dealing with you. The Lord ain't dealing with you. Give me that in uh, Ecclesiastes 32, 17. It's Rock 32, 17. A sinful man will not be reproved. Uh-huh. But findeth an excuse according to his will. So when you brothers start making excuses, we know you're in the midst of sin. This brother's in the midst of sin. Let's move on. Next brother. Next, right there. So, and we and we gotta understand, and this is to the captains and the deacons and the bishops, especially you bishop. Stop making every brother a captain. If these men can't travel to do what we need them to do in this truth. Don't make them a captain. They should not be captains. Everybody? Oh, y'all are here. Do y'all understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, all praise. All praise. Oh, Bishop, the ones that, the complaint is always my wife, my wife. Yes. We had a brother who was missing here, and he died. And his wife called for us to bury him. We're not doing that no more. I asked you men who knows him, and very few of you know him. But as soon as he died, all of a sudden, his wife know our number. And no sister knows her. So that's not going to happen again. If you're not regularly attending here and we see you putting the work in, we're not going to listen to the cries of your family to come bury you. You want an Israelite uh, uh, burial, and you was in, in Israelite participation. But now all of a sudden, you know our number. Because we ain't doing that no more. Okay? Because it takes time. It stops us from dealing with the people. Christ said, let the dead bury the dead. That brother wasn't alive here. Some of y'all said that y'all would text him. He was on the telegram. He wouldn't even answer. And some of y'all made excuses. Oh, his wife was sick. Did his wife call us to come to her? Did his wife speak to any of the sisters? Did anybody say go to the hospital? And nobody knew nothing about her. Okay, so you're not doing that no more. That was the last one. That one slipped by because some of y'all was in, uh, in your sympathy for them. And that's not how things work. The bishop is telling you Christ prayed for what? more laborers. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Just because you visited here one or two times, you ain't no member. A member is someone when we see a face, we're like, yo, I know that brother. I know that sister. If you make an excuse not to come, you stay online, and that's where you will remain because you're not a part of building the nation up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Give me Proverbs 6. We're going to talk about um, I mean Exodus 20. I'm sorry. Exodus 20. We're going to talk about labor and leisure. Write that down. Labor and leisure. Exodus 20, verse 8. Exodus, Exodus chapter 20 and 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, Thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So the Lord gave us six days to do our own personal labor. But he, he requires the Sabbath day, the seventh day for us. So I know some of you brothers, are you have sisters too. Some of y'all got jobs that force you to work. Try and work it out. Try and work it out, okay, so that you can keep God's Sabbath day. Try your best. That's all I can say. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, and I want verse 24. Ecclesiastes 2 and 24. There is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink, and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. This also I saw, that it was from the hand of God. For who can eat, or, or who else can hasten hereunto more That's than verse I? verse 24. Yes, sir. All I want is 24. Read it again. Yes, sir. There is nothing better for a man 
than that he should eat and drink. Eat and drink. Go ahead. And that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. And make your soul good in your labor. This yep. also... This also I saw that it was from the hand of God. That's from the hand of God. Was that the whole verse? Yes, sir. Give me chapter 3 and verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 13. And also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of his and enjoy the good of all his labor. It is the gift of God. So that's a gift of God. To eat and drink and enjoy the good of your labor. Now give me Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Chapter 7 and verse 15. Sirach chapter 7, verse 15. Hate not laborious work. Hate not laborious work. Go ahead. Neither husbandry. That means planting. Neither husbandry means which, planting. Which the Most High hath ordained. So the Most High ordained us to labor on this work, in the, on this earth. That's what he ordained. Okay. Give me Ecclesia, um, give me Proverbs 6. Labor and leisure. Write this down. Lazy is not leisure. There's a difference when the scriptures talk about leisure. There's a difference. Proverbs 6, let's start at verse 6. Proverbs 6 and 6. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Look at the ant, you sluggard. You lazy brother, look at an ant. Go ahead. Consider her ways and be wise. Consider an ant. And be wise. Which having no guide, overseer, or ruler. An ant doesn't have an overseer, guide, or ruler. Go ahead. Provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. So the ant prepares during the summertime for the harvest in the winter. Go ahead. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? So now he says to us, how long will you sleep, O sluggard? This is for you brothers that sleep all day. Go ahead. When wilt thou arise? Won't even arise and look for a job. Go ahead. When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Mm -hmm. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that, tra that traveleth. That's why you always broke. You are what they call a brokey. You always broke. Why? Because of your own sluggardness. I don't want to do this. Oh, I don't know. I went to the interview and... Uh, we hear it all the time. Read it again, that verse. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth. And it's always that broke brother that want to get married. Bro, I want to marry sister so Bro, you ain't even got a job. How you going to take care of sister so-and-so? Okay, you can't. Now you mad at us. We trying to keep you from marriage. You know, we, we just telling you, if you marry, and she, if she agrees to marry you, power to the people. <laughs> but sis, when things go wrong, and they will, Shame on you, don't come to us complain, because you knew the dude didn't have a job when you married him. Read that again. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, mm -hmm. and thy want as an armed man. It's like you got robbed by an armed man. Give me Proverbs 21, 25. The lazy brothers. Proverbs 21, verse 25. The desire of the slothful killeth him. The desire of the slothful killeth him. Go ahead. For his hands refuse to labor. You don't want to do a damn thing. You just lazy. Give me Proverbs 26, 13. Proverbs 26. And you know how some, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to say how evil some brothers are. When we go over these scriptures about not being lazy, get the Sabbath off, get a job, you always come back there with that brother. He got a job, but he has to work on the Sabbath. We always hear that. It's like it never fails. Bro, you took that job? Yeah. That you had the option of not getting the Sabbath. Well, I didn't ask. Bro, come on, man. You did. Listen, just go, go, go. Where we at, Leon? Proverbs 26, 13. Mm -hmm. the, slothful, the slothful man saith, there is a lion in the way. A lion is in the street. That's an excuse, brother. There's always something out there why you can't go get up early and look for a job or get a job. Become an entrepreneur. How about that? No, there's a lion. It's, something's always messing with you. Go ahead. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his you bed. You know, the door opens, goes, ee! that's you in bed. Ee! You're that door. You're that door. Give me uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and 18. Now, I'm not talking about the brother that's out there hustling, trying to find work. I ain't talking about you. I'm talking about the brother who has opportunity and just lets it go on by. He don't give a damn. He just want to play video games. That's what I'm talking about. 
Where we at, Leon? Ecclesiastes 10, 18. I can't even get a bomb. Go ahead. <laughs> by, by much slothfulness. By the, much slothfulness, meaning laziness. The building decayeth. The building decayeth. That's what. Go ahead. And through idleness of and, the hands. And through idleness of the hands. The house droppeth through. The house droppeth. That's when we when we got to school. Remember, Deacon, uh, Captain Abiel, I was, hey, we got we to gotta make sure that school, we have deep cleaning every couple of, every month. Make sure everything. Remember, brothers was putting their tires in the basement. Brothers was bringing. I said, no, this is not to be your, what it, when you're a hoarder. You just bringing your junk. This is, no, you're being Negro now. You're being black, bringing their dirty clothes in. No, that's not what this is for. We come here to worship and learn the word of God. Okay, read that whole verse again. By, by much lawfulness, the building decay. Nobody want to sweep. Nobody want to uh, mop. Are you kidding me? Nobody want to clean the toilet. No, we got to get our minds right. Stop being black in our heads and our way of thinking. Go ahead. Being bums, being bums right. And through idleness of the hands, the house Dropping through. Yeah, your house, whole house collapsed. That's physically and spiritually, brothers. I want y'all, you got to look at that in levels, okay? That was uh, Ecclesiastes 10, 18. Yes, sir. Give me Sirach, Ecclesiasticus 22 and 1. Yeah, put that up. Yeah, that's it right there. That's him. Then he want to get all that stuff right there and bring it to the school. Like, see that little dirty garment over there, whatever that is? He want to hang it in the school. You ain't hanging that in here. Get the hell out of here, you nasty son of a Your mama and daddy ain't teach you nothing. Who raised you? Ecclesiastes 22 and 1. A slothful man yes. is a lazy brother. You're a lazy bum. You know who you are. If you, if you got your head down, you know this is you. Oh, I'm not even going to look up. Somebody told Bishop about me. <laughs> hey, hey, we had a brother. He married a sister, right? The sister had a house. The house was paid off for a nice house. This brother married his sister. Two years later, the house turned into a dump. Wow, wow. <laughs> her wow. sister came to us and like, yo. She like, this is what the brother did. Like, and we what we like, yo, is we can't do nothing for you, brother. You got it. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the lazy brother. I tell you. We, where we at, Leon? Sirach 22, verse 1. Uh-huh. A slothful man. A is bum. Is compared to a filthy stone. You compare to a filthy stone. Go ahead. And everyone will hiss him out of his disgrace. Right. Everyone will hiss him out to his disgrace. Nobody want to be around a lazy brother. Go ahead. A slothful man is compared to the filth of a dung hill. You're compared to a pile of doo-doo. You are compared. God compares you to a pile of sh That's Bible. That is Bible. Uh, that is not a bomb moment. That's a fart. That's a fart sound, Cap. That's how a fart sound. Put that on the screen. Wow. That's a that's elephant doodle. -doo. That's what you're compared to. This movie happens to be from uh, Jurassic Park. This this oh, it's uh, dinosaur doodle. -doo. It's dinosaur crap. <laughs> <laughs> Read that again, Liam. A slothful man is compared to the filth of a dung hill. Every man that taketh it up will shake his hand. It's like you touch the doodle, -doo and it's like, oh, shoot, that wasn't a rock, that was doodle. -doo. What the hell? <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. Give me uh, chapter 37 of Sirach and 11. Sirach 37 and 11. Neither consult with a woman. Where start at? Uh, 10. 10. Rock 37 and 10. Consult not with one that suspecteth thee. Don't consult with a brother or a sister that don't like you. You know they got an issue. That's what I mean, suspect of you. Go ahead. And hide thy counsel from such as envy thee. And don't tell your business to people that hate you either. You know they're envious. They fill with hate. Don't tell them your business. Go ahead. Neither consult with a woman touching her of whom she is jealous. I'm going to give an example of that. You see a sister you like. Sister been here a year, maybe two years. You want to know what she's like. You speak to another sister who's been here eight years, looking for a man, can't find nobody. And you talking to her, hey, what do you think about that sister over there? And in her mind, nigga, I've been here eight years. 
She just came through the door. And you're looking at her. Why you ain't hollering at me? That's all in her mind. So she gonna say, nah, she ain't right. She ain't no good. She a demon. Yeah, she ain't. Don't, don't, I would, bro, don't do it. You're gonna have a heart of pain, life of pain. Don't do it. So read that again. Neither consult with a woman touching her of whom she is jealous. Mm -hmm. Neither with a coward in matters of war. We've seen that all a lot of times. We're talking about war. Hey, we want to go here. We want to do that. And you always got that brother. I remember there was one captain. I ain't going to say his name. Northern Kingdom. Anyway. Damn. Uh, we in Puerto Rico. And I say, hey, go over to the projects over there. And the captain says to me, Bishop, we got to ask permission. I said, ask permission from who? The drug dealer. I said, nigga, if you don't get out of my face. We don't ask permission from drug dealers. That's right. We the warriors. Right. The hell is this? I said, go in there and teach. Go in there and hand out the flyers. The hell is this? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> then he, then he, 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 here's another one. This is Southern Kingdom. Hey, I need, but we need to go to Haiti. Bishop, do you know what's going on in Haiti? I know what's going on in Haiti. They're eating people. I don't care if you're going to punch them, you're going to break their teeth out. They're eating us. Bishop, Bishop, you don't understand. They kidnap. They will kidnap you, ki kidnap us, Bishop. I said, who's going with it? Let me hear the team. He gives a I said, oh, Captain Severus, six foot three, 400 pounds. I said, I want to see them kidnap him. I said, let's go. We went out there. I said, I would just wait. I folded my arm. I want to see when them niggas kidnap Captain Severus. I just waited. Let them pull a van up. I want to see it. I'll laugh, and then we go get them. The hell is this? <laughs> Read that again. Neither consult with a woman touching of whom she is jealous, neither with what we was just reading, neither with a coward in matters of war. So, brother, it's okay to be scared, but don't let your fear control you or manipulate you. Go ahead. Nor with a merchant concerning exchange. Business, go ahead. Nor with a now buyer. I got a lot of stories on these. Go ahead. <laughs> nor with a buyer of selling. Mm -hmm. Nor with an. I, well, I'll be the. I'll be the. <laughs> Nor with an envious... I got to say it. You it wasn't in D.C. or no, Detroit. A sister made his shirts for $350 and brothers was buying them things. Y'all simple as hell. Y'all simple as hell. I said, you can't make this stuff. Go ahead, put it on the screen. Yeah, that was Haiti. That was it. That was it right there. Ain't nobody scared of you. We're going to go out there and teach whether you like it or not. Ain't that right, uh, Deacons? Ain't that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now I have to ask him, did he know the person? <laughs> <laughs> then he said he don't know, Bishop. Okay. Woo. Where we at, Leon? Nor with a merchant concerning exchange. Mm -hmm. nor, yeah, with, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. nor with a buyer of selling. Nor with an envious man of thankfulness. Yeah, some brothers don't know how to say thankful. They fill with hate. Go ahead. Nor yeah, with yeah, an hold on, hold on, hold on. Put that image back up. The one from Haiti. Bishop, this, that, that's what the brother looked like. <laughs> <When you tell. laughs> bro, we got that, we got this shit, the fear spirit, bro. Mm. Where we at, Leon? Uh, <laughs> nor with a buyer of selling, nor with an envious man of thankfulness, nor with an unmerciful man touching kindness. Some brothers don't understand kindness. You're unmerciful, go ahead. Nor with the slothful for any work. You don't consult with a lazy brother about any type of work. Go ahead. Nor within hireling for a year of finishing work. Right, hireling is temporary, like two months. It's a part-time worker. You don't consult with him about long-time work. Go ahead. Nor with an idle servant of much business. You don't consult with an idle servant of much business. Go ahead. Hearken not unto these in any matter of counsel. You see, they don't hearken to none of those types of men or women in any matter of counsel. Go ahead. But be continually with a godly man. Why does it say that in conjunction to what we just read? Because the godly man has his stuff in order. Okay, everybody understand that? The godly man has his mental faculties right. His character's right. He's been proven. Everybody understand that? He's not what we read in verse 11. Does everybody understand that? Yes, read again verse 12. But be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Because if he's keeping the commandments of the Lord, he's not fearful. He's not slothful. 
Uh, what else did it say? Come on, y'all, help me out here. He's not a coward in war. He's uh, give, help me out. He's not jealous. He's not jealous. He or she's not jealous. Not unthankful. Not he don't deal with usury, trying to oppress the people financially. He ain't like that. He's not unmerciful. Okay. From there, from there, from there. What, what was that, Officer Liam? That was 12? That was verse 12. Give me chapter 38 and verse 24. So about 38, verse 24. The wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure. A lot of you brothers pray for wisdom. It comes by leisure. Opportunity of leisure. And that opportunity means you have to create that. You got to make the leisure time. When you can get it, use it. Everybody understand that? Read it again. The wisdom of a learned man cometh by opportunity of leisure. And he that hath little business shall become wise. If you got little business, you shall become wise. Go ahead. How can he get... Why? Because you take advantage of the little business you got. Okay? You might you work eight hours a day. Okay. The rest of the, the, the hours of the day, you got, what, eight more hours before bedtime, I guess? You utilize that time wisely. Okay? Read. How can he get wisdom that holdeth the plow? And that glorieth in the gold. You glorieth in, in the gold, meaning you, you glorify in your business, your job. Go ahead. That driveth oxen mm -hmm. and is occupied in the labors mm -hmm. and whose talk is of bullocks. Because you know, you know the Lord says labor. He created labor for us. You take advantage of that, but it turns your advantageness turns into covetousness. You want more and more and more money. You don't care about the wisdom of God. Go ahead. He giveth his mind to make fur furrows. Mm -hmm. Furrows is when you plow with your oxen. Go ahead, to put the seeds into the hole and you cover it up. Yeah. Go ahead. And is diligent to give the kind fodder. Mm -hmm. So every carpenter and workmaster that laboreth night and day, and they that cut and grave seals and are diligent to make great variety and give themselves to counterfeit imagery mm -hmm. and watch to finish a work. That's art. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The smith also sitting by the anvil and considering the iron work. He makes weapons. Go ahead. The vapor of the fire wasteth his flesh. And he fighteth with the heat of the furnace. The noise of the hammer and the anvil is ever in his ears. Hey, can y'all find me a picture of uh, somebody making a sword with an anvil and fire? Blacksmith. A blacksmith. Thank you. That's the word. Always occupied in work. Come on. IT, you got me? Yeah, that's it. That's what it's going to read that part again about the anvil. The noise of the hammer and the anvil is ever in his ears, and his eyes look still upon the pattern of the thing that he maketh, mm -hmm. and he setteth his mind to finish his work and watcheth to polish it perfectly. So doth the potter sitting at his work and turning the wheel about with his feet. Can you find me a potter making a craft, potter craft, um, a bowl, a cup, so we can see what it's talking about? Because we will read the Bible, but a lot of us have not, what we're reading here, we have not experienced some of these things. So we're like, well, what is that? I don't know what that is. Okay, we're yeah. very limited. That's why uh, the image make a big difference. Right? You yes. can show the people. Exactly. Where we, um, uh, IT, come on. Pottery. Type in pottery, craftsman, pottery. You know, they got the little wheel and it's spinning the clay. Yeah, that's it. That's it right there. Read that again, Leon. So doth the potter, sitting at his work and turning the wheel about with his feet, Go ahead. who is always carefully set at his work and maketh all his work by number. Go ahead. He fashioneth the clay with his arm and boweth down his strength before his feet. He applieth himself to lead it over, and he is diligent to make clean the furnace. All these trust to their hands. All and, these trust to their hands. And everyone is wise in his work. You, you ever meet these brothers that are wise in their work? They can tell you everything about their job. But when it comes to the word of God, they're clueless. We've met some of you, some of you sitting here right now. Go ahead. Without these cannot a city be inhabited. But you need men like that. Because without men like that, the city can't be inhabited. Go ahead. And they shall not dwell where they will, nor go up and down. Go ahead. They shall not be sought for in public council. That's what I want y'all to get to right there. Brothers that are always occupied in their job, their work, you shall not be sought for in public council. You're not to be raised up as an officer. A captain, a deacon, a bishop, men like you, no. Mm -mm. Go ahead. Nor sit high in the congregation. You should not sit high in the congregation. Go ahead. 
They shall not sit on the judge's seat, mm -hmm. nor understand the sentence of judgment. Why won't they understand the sentence of judgment? Give me that precept in Proverbs, is it 514? I can't remember. About evil men. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, that one. I forgot. I know it's in Proverbs. I just don't remember where it is. Come on, y'all. Help me. You found it? Proverbs 28 and 5. Thank you. Come on. Proverbs 28 and 5. Evil men understand not judgment. When I hear brothers or sisters say, I don't understand the judgment, I'm confused. That lets us know you're evil. Because when we bring out the law and you're still confused, you are a Christian and you don't understand God's law at all. Go back. Where was that? Sirach 38. In verse 33, mm -hmm. they shall not be so like the law will say when, when some like Roman, most famous one, right? Romans, Romans 16. 16, and I think it's 17. 17. Yes, sir. This is the most famous one I hear men and women got a problem with. Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions. You'll have a brother or sister causing division in the body. Go ahead. And offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. Mm -hmm. And avoid them. And do what? Avoid them. Go ahead. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good works and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the sinners. So we'll say, hey, we're not supposed to deal with them. They came in this truth. They caused confusion, division, all kind of confusion. And here goes a brother or sister. Why can't we talk to them? You see... <laughs> Now, giving a precept to that in Matthew 18, 17, here's a precept. That lets us know, sister, you're evil. Brother, you are evil. Then you notice that, Bishop, people like that cannot reason. Because they're, they're, with that emotion in you, the emotion feeling they're holding with, there is no reason in it. Exactly. You can't tell me who to talk to. Right. You can't tell me who to. Get the hell. You can go to. Go ahead, read that. Matthew 18, 17. And if he shall, if an, and if he shall neglect to hear them, tell and it. If he shall neglect neglect to hear them. The people that got an issue with, tell it to who? Tell it unto the church. That's the leadership. Go ahead. But if he ne but if he neglect to hear the church, he don't want to hear the church. He don't want to hear God's laws. Let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican. We didn't deal with the heathen. We didn't deal with the, the publicans with tax collectors. We didn't deal with them. Christ said treat them like that. Now you go. I'm confused. I don't understand why we can't deal with them. Sister, you're evil. Brother, you got the devil. Get the hell out of here. Because what you want to do, keep talking to the evil person. They manipulate your mind. Now you come back in here and to do it to the congregation. Just go. We don't need you. Bishop, hey, Bishop that took place in 2018. A mm -hmm. lot of people was, was confused when the judgment went forth. Yep. Yep. And they went with, um, with, with the people that left up out of here. No, they... No, the, the people that left up over here, a lot of them going back into the world in all type of evil. That's right. And now, they, now they're realizing like then, the Bishop Nathaniel and, and them was right about this person. Now you want to come back. I'm sorry, deacons, would you all forgive me? Can I come back in IUIC? You know, no, watch online and learn online, man. Right. Why? Because you evil. Mm -hmm. You want the scripture says, evil men understand not judgment. Yep. Exactly. Where we at, Liam? Back now, to, let's yes, go back. Sir. Where was we at? Sirach 33, 38 and 33. They shall not be sought for in public council, nor sit high in the congregation. They shall not sit on the judge's seat, nor understand the sentence of judgment. They cannot declare justice and judgment, and they shall not be found where parables are spoken, mm -hmm. but they will maintain the state of the world. You will maintain the United States of America. Go ahead. And all their desire is in the work of their craft. All your desire is in your craft. Building America. That's all you're about. So you stay here and perish. You know what's so heavy behind that, Bishop? You will never find a brother. When we gather together, we'll never find him. Mm -hmm. There. He's always busy in his work. He's always occupied himself. So busy. Two jobs, three jobs. Because that brother like this, you cannot be used. Because his meditation is not in the Lord. Is in the American dream. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Get uh, Romans 12, 11. 
Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Now, in this truth, we discussed the physical work in this world, which we know we have to do, but what about for the most high? The book of Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Not slothful in business. We are not to be slothful in business, especially God's business. Go ahead. Fervent in spirit. We got to be fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Serving the Lord. So in God's business, we are not to be slothful. We get some brothers, you start to fall back from doing the work, from doing your responsibilities in this truth. Okay. You want to do what the next brother or the next sister is doing. You have been given your duty, do and fulfill that. Give me Hebrews 6 and 12. Well, if I can't do what I want to do, I ain't going to do it. Then goodbye. We don't need you. We've given you a position. Fulfill that. And if anything else, we'll come in time. Hebrews 6 and 12. Hebrews chapter 6 and 12. That you be not slothful. What's that word? Slothful. Don't be slothful. Don't be lazy. Go ahead. But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. We got to be followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. So, of course, first and foremost, that deals with our forefathers. Then you got those brothers and sisters that you know are zealous in this truth. Follow them. But some of you got a circle of knuckleheads, a circle of slothful brothers, slothful sisters. You don't be around those brothers and sisters who, who you see got good faith, strong faith, and zeal. You don't, I don't want to be around them. From there, give me Micah 4 and 10. Micah chapter 4, verse 10. When I, I tell you, when I came in the truth, I didn't like hanging around my peers. I wanted to be around the senior brothers, okay? And if I had opportunity to be around leadership, I was there. I do security. You need, you need, because they would drink, uh, what did they drink? I think it was Henny. I get it for you. I just wanted to sit there. I'll pour it for you. I just wanted to be there. That group over there, the knuckle, I didn't want to be with them, because they were talking about sports. And some woman they met. I said, I didn't, mm -mm, I can't be around spirits like that. They're going to drag me down. Where we at, Liam? Micah 4 and 10. Watch this. Be in pain. Be in pain. And labor to bring forth. Labor to bring forth God's kingdom. That's what it's talking about. Be in pain. If it hurts, God says, do it. Go ahead. Like there's a brother in, uh, is it Philemon? His name was Epiphras. I can never pronounce his name. Epiphroditus. He worked to the brink of death. That's what the Lord's telling us. He said, that's what I want to see. Read it again. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, uh -huh. O daughter of Zion. That's us. Come on. Like a woman in travail. Like a woman in travail. I want to pause there for a second. I had a precept for that. Where's that? Micah. I, it's in Ezra. We went over it last night. Yeah, give me that. Give me that. Second Ezra. Is it? You better be right. Give me no wrong scripture. Like a woman in travail. That's well. Watch this. Watch this. Like a woman in travail. Second Ezra 16, 19. Second Ezra chapter 16 and verse 19. Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. So we in this truth, thank you. We see famine. We see plagues. That's COVID-19, for example. We see tribulation and anguish. And we understand the ascent as scourges for amendments, meaning payback. But watch this. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. You know why? Because when the anguish comes, the tribulation, the pestilence comes, it comes and then it subsides. And when it subsides and it seems like, like it's gone, we go back to what we were doing. I give an example. During COVID-19, right? We was, all, we was all saying, hey, we got to eat better. We got we to gotta drink this, do this, get our health right. Now it's gone. We went right back to hamburgers and french fries and milkshakes. We fit right in this too. God says, I'm warning you. It's like a woman in travail. You're going to see a lot of come. You're going to see a lot of go. He said, even with the pestilence, just for example, I'm just give you an example. COVID-19 came and it's gone. But guess what? We know according to scripture, pestilence is going to come back. Now, when it come back now, you want to try and eat right again? Some of us going to die behind that. Some of us going to die behind that. That slothful, lazy brother, that slothful, lazy sister. Keep on with some greasy food and stuff. Come on. Bishop, even yes. with the, uh, you've been warning them to gather food. A That's lot of right. them stopped doing it. Mm -hmm. That's right. A lot of them stopped doing it. And what we were saying about the fasting and limiting the food, 
your household should already be trained not to be in the fridge every five minutes. Okay, because let's say the food shortage just happened and your house is already trained where there's people who eat once a day. Mm -hmm. Okay, I just started doing that and it works. It's not hard. But if you train your kids that every time they see a food commercial on TV, let's go to McDonald's, let's go to Wendy's, mm -hmm. let's go to Burger King's, your household is going to suffer. Mm -hmm. That's right. All we can do is warn you, brothers, sisters, all we can do is warn you. Where we at, Liam? He was in Micah 4. Go back to Micah 4 and 10. Micah chapter so now we understand the woman in travail, what it means. So, Micah 4 and 10. Because Be a contraction sometimes is what? Five hours apart, then four hours, three, two, one, right? So in this world, God says this world is like a woman in travail. The contractions, the growing, the pains of birth, maybe five years apart, four years apart, three years apart, two years apart, one year apart. 12 months, 10 months apart, 8 months apart, 7 months, and in between those aparts, things is quiet, things is calm. And you go, oh, everything's good. I can go back to my stupidity. And you're going to get caught out there. You're going to get caught. Okay. Where are we at, Liam? Micah 4 and 10? Yes, sir. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. Labor to bring forth work, right? Oh, daughter of Zion. Mm -hmm. Like a woman in travail. Like a woman. Be aware. Be, this is like a woman in travail, go ahead. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, mm -hmm. and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. There shalt thou be delivered from Babylon the great, right? There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. The Lord prophesied he's going to redeem us from here, Babylon the great. So we're not on this kick about everybody leave, everybody run to the next country. Uh -uh. It says the redemption, the redeemer is going to come from here first and foremost. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Okay, but the part I wanted y'all to see is be in pain, labor, work to bring forth the kingdom. Okay, Christ said the kingdom is not does not come with what observation. observation. You can't. It says it's in you. You got to work for it. Okay, give me Matthew twenty five fourteen. Matthew chapter twenty five and verse fourteen. For the kingdom of heaven is a, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, mm -hmm. who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So this man that is talking about is Christ. When it says uh, went into a far country, that's Acts chapter one. Real quickly, I'm really quick, verse eight through eleven, so we can see. The book of Acts. Acts 1, 8 through 11. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received them out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taking up from you into heaven, shall, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. All right. So let's go back to Matthew 25, 14. We're going to read this quick. I'm looking at the time, and I got a lot to go over. Mm -hmm. Matthew so 20. I'm going to have to just glaze over this stuff. Yeah. Matthew 25, 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To every man according to his several ability. And straightway took his journey. Y'all see that? He gave to every one of us, to every man, according to his several ability. Here's the precept. 1 Corinthians 12, 11. Come on. Yes, sir. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11. But all these work of that one in the self-same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So when you read above it, and for time's sake, we're not reading it. He gave out different gifts, different administrations in the body. And he divided to every one of us severally as he willed. Okay? Let's go back to Matthew 25. Verse 16. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them 
other five talents. So the talents, first and foremost, begins with your understanding of God's word, the application of God's word, his laws. That's the first understanding. Then it is attributed to the things you know how to do in this world. Okay? Why? To help bring out more laborers, the kingdom of heaven. Okay? And likewise, he had, and likewise, he had received two. He also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. And hid his Lord's money, his understanding. Go ahead. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with That's him. for you brothers that sit online. Sisters too, I'm not talking about if you are up in age. I'm not If you're elderly, I'm not talking about if you're sick. If you have a, a physical impediment, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you healthy brothers and sisters sitting at home right now. And it's been years since you have come to help us physically do this work. Go ahead. Read again. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto no, me no, five. No, 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 no. I want verse 18. I'm sorry. Verse 18. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. That's the brother and sister that sits at home right now and does nothing for this truth. Nothing. Go ahead. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoned with them. And so, he, and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Uh -huh. His Lord said unto him, well done, thou, thou good and faithful servant. Thou that's, all, that's what we all want to hear. We all want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Where does this go down at? In the wilderness when Christ takes us up out of here. That's when this is all going down, okay? His Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will make thee a ruler over many things. Mm -hmm. Into thou, into the joy of the Lord. You see that part right there? Into thou, into the joy of the Lord. That's Pause right there. Leon, we're going to read this quick. I'll on my list, but it's part of my Exodus, Ezekiel 20, to show you. Ezekiel 20. Uh, I think verse 33, I need you to read quick, not stuttering and all this stuff. Just yes, read. Sir. Ezekiel 20, 33. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people and will gather you out of the countries wherein you are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out. For the Lord ain't going to play with us. Come on. And I will bring you into the wilderness See of that? the people. I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. And there will I plead with you face to face. That's what we were just reading about. Well, go ahead. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you. So we know that that wilderness is the same wilderness. We're going right back there. Go ahead. So will I plead with you, say of the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will bring you into the bond under, under covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. Now the rebels, we're going to read about that in Matthew 25. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. Good. And them that transgress against me. Mm -hmm. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. You will not enter into the joy of the Lord, the land of Israel. Go ahead. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. Let's go back to Matthew 25. And 21 again. Yes, sir. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. That's the kingdom of heaven on earth. That's Jerusalem, new Israel. Go ahead. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Uh-oh, watch this. Here come the rebels. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I know thee that art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. You hear the excuse? I was afraid. I didn't earn to do it. I had to do this. My mama, my wife, I was under her skirt. Ah! Go ahead. Lo, there thou hast, this is thine. There thou hast, that is thine. Go ahead. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. See what Christ called him? A wicked, lazy nickel. That's yeah. what he called him. Read that again. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. 
Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not and gather where I have not strawed. Because we're the ones on the earth doing the work. Christ is in the heavens. He's watching us do the work, putting in the labor. Go ahead. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges. This is the exchanges. We, the church, the congregation of Israel is the exchanges. Go ahead. And then at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. Meaning interest. So what was Christ saying? You should have done what I told you to do. You have no excuse. Go ahead. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that have not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Read. And cast ye the unprofitable servant. Christ called him an unprofitable servant. Go ahead. Into outer darkness. Kill him. Go ahead. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Cast that nigga out of here. Cast him into the lake of fire. That's what he's saying. Now, from there, give me Sirach 11. I'm going to go quick because time. I didn't realize it's been two hours. Sirach 11, 1 and 2. Ecclesiasticus. Sirach 11, 1 and 2. Wisdom lifteth up the head of him that is of low degree. So, brothers, sisters, if you got low self-esteem, it says wisdom will lift up your head. Learn your history. Learn God's laws. It will give you the esteem you long for. You young men, you young women, read this Bible, study it, meditate. It will give you the faith, the confidence you so desperately need. Go ahead. And make of him to sit among great men. And it's going to make you to sit among great men. Go ahead. Commend not a man for his beauty. Uh oh, sisters. Commend not a man for his beauty. Neither abhor a man for his outward appearance. And don't hate a man because of the way he looks. Because he got a flat, wide nose. Watch this. Give me. <laughs> um, I'm going to just jump. So give me Ecclesiastes 13.25. It's about 13.25. The heart of a man changeth his countenance. The heart, the mind of a man changes the way you look. Go ahead. Whether it be for good or evil. Whether it be for good or evil. And a merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance. Y'all see that? Go ahead. A cheerful countenance is a token of a heart that is in prosperity. That makes you happy. Go ahead. And the finding out of parables is a wearisome labor of the mind. Meaning constantly reading books, constantly reading different books. From there, give me chapter 19 and verse 29. A man may be known by his look. Uh-oh, a man may be known. By... Now, this contradicts what Martin said, Martin Luther King. He said, I want to be judged by the character. I forgot how he said it. How did he say it? By the content of my heart, something like that. Character. character of my heart. I don't know how he said it. But anyway, it's wrong. It's not Bible. It's not biblical. And it's not reality. Your brothers, sisters, you got to let your sons and daughters know. People will always judge you by the way you look. The first impression they get of you is the way you look. Read that again. A man may be known by his look and one that have understanding by his countenance mm -hmm. when thou meetest him. Okay. A man's attire and excessive laughter and gait. Gait means walk, the way he walks. Show what he is. Show what he is. I'm going to tell you, that goes with women too. Our sister was caught in his brother. She said, I can't talk to this brother no more. He's a bum. I said, how you know he's a bum? He got a uh, nice outfit on. She said, no, 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 no. She said, you didn't notice his watch. This thing women look for. I said, his watch? She said, his watch was $5. His shoes was from the dollar store. He's putting in the whole facade like he making big money. She said, he's broke. He can't take care of me. He can barely take care of himself. And the car he got is a rental. I said, oh, shoot, you saw all that? She said, I saw all that. Women, didn't women look at you. Do, 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 do. That's how they do. And guess what? White folks do it too when you go on an interview. As soon as you walk through the door, doo -doo -doo -doo, first nigga, doo -doo -doo, nigga, hair's unkempt, beard is unkempt, uh, tie is crooked. Once you ran over, they see all that first. Then you sit down and they talking with you and looking at you. Read it again, Leon, so you get in your head. A man may be known by his look and one that have understanding by his countenance when thou meetest him. A man's attire and excessive laughter and gate, show what he is. Show what, that's Bible. God says that is the reality we live in. You got to understand, if you allow your son to walk around with his pants below his butt, he's going to get stopped by the cops. If, he, if you allow him to wear oversized clothing, he's going to get stopped by the police. Because the concept is you hide weapons in oversized clothing. You don't understand that? Why, why you stop him? Why you stop him? You're harassing him. That's, what, that's the way it is. 
Some things will never change. Okay? Not good. Hmm? Sisters that dress as a hoe. You can't yeah, say. There you go. I dress like a hoe, but I'm not a hoe. Right. You know, yeah, I should be able to dress the way how I want to dress mm-hmm. without you object objectifying me. Right, it makes right. no damn sense. You dress like a hoe, most like you are you are a hoe. <laughs> so now that you bring the sisters up, so sister, it's either you you're gonna find a good looking dummy or an ugly man with wisdom. Or something in between. Maybe there's there's something in between. Just have patience, sister. Just have patience. (laughs) Ugly man. Well, all ugly brothers ain't wise. That's why I said something in the middle, you know. But you know what sisters gotta do? Like we just read, a man shall be don't commend a man according to his beauty. That's what they do. They look at the they look at your outward appearance first. That's what they do. Now that's wrong. But that's what they do. But sisters need to look in the mirror. Hey, can you put a picture up of Diane Carroll? I want Diane. Now, this is my back in the day. I was a kid. She was grown, but I remember watching her when growing up. Diane Carroll, back in the day. Don't give me no Diane Carroll. She's 86. <laughs> Come on, IT. Yes. Diane Carroll. Woo! My daddy used to stare at her all day. Look at them who has to sit there and go, wow. Hey, give me this, the Supremes back in the day. The Supremes. Diana Ross and the Supremes. I'm giving you old school stuff. Thank you, Evia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put that on, on the screen. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And let me tell you about something about Diana Ross and the Supremes that you may not know. Now, they wore wigs back then, but that's not what I'm talking about. They had to go to charm school. Barry Gordy made them go to charm school to learn a little bit of history, civil rights was going on, because he said, God forbid, they go on a a network and they ask them a question about what's going on in society, and they're like, duh, I don't know. So he said, no, they got to go to charm school. They got to learn what's going on in the world. That's what they lack on this side of the the room, the, the women. Not all of them. A lot of them can't hold the conversation. And y'all married a pretty dummy woman. And you mad. She can't cook. She can't clean. She don't wash her behind. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, give me a... Uh, uh... No, I ain't going to pull them up. So, brother, you can take them off the screen. Lovely woman. You can take them off the screen. And they'll make it wasn't overly done. Like... A layer. Oh, speaking of makeup. I remember they have a, there's something in the police department, they have a photo array where you put in, let's say the sister got arrested. Brother, one brother asked me, he said, can you um, check my wife's background? I said, why? I said, she ain't, he said, she ain't right. I said, I warned you, I told you she ain't right. <laughs> when he met this woman, I looked at her, she brought it to the school. I said, brother, she ain't right. He said, he said, Bishop, she's right. She's good. She's good. She's good. Not you, not you, Levi. I ain't talking about Levi. This is somebody else. This is somebody else. Let me see if he in the back back there. But anyway, I said, she ain't right. I said, I said, here's a test. Just a test. I said, tell her how good she looked in those jeans when you first met her last month. Last month. I said, tell her how good she looked in them tight jeans. I said, just say that. I said, don't say no more. So the next Sabbath, he comes back. She's in there where she had a head cover and bought a blue, all that stuff. I said, what happened? He said, she went out. I said what you said, what you told me to say. And she went out and bought jeans. She, all, she threw all her dresses in the garbage except that when she got right. I said, I told you she ain't right. She ain't here for this truth, bro. When you showed her the law, she don't care about this. She want you. So now back to the story. The same brother says, can you look up my wife? I said, what do you mean look up? He said, something ain't right. I said, I told you about her. She ain't right. He said, I said give me a name and date of birth. Do, 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 do. Boop. Arrest record. I said, oh, she got an arrest record right there. I said, well, what? She assaulted her last boyfriend. She slashed his tires and slashed him and the woman he was talking to. She went to jail for several months. I said, Congratulations. So then you put it on the screen. This ain't her, but put it on the screen. So then, 
So then in the same story, I put in her arrest number, and she had been arrested about 15 times. Now, I'm not saying women can't repent, but that ain't the, that ain't the moral of the story I'm getting to. The story I'm getting to is makeup. And they say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about makeup. She, although she'd been arrested 15 different times, she had 15 different looks <laughs> from that fake hair and the fake face. And I look at him looking. I said, this can't be the same sister. Doop. It's the same one. Boop. It's the what? Doop. Da, bop, bop. These, what the hell? She looked, she's a transformer. <laughs> More than meets the eye. That damn makeup. That damn makeup. And the only reason, because I remember saying, I said, how come they don't make these women take off, when they get arrested, take off that stupid wig, the weave, and take the makeup off so you know what they look like? He said, the feminist movement. The feminist movement, the LGBT, got a lot of power. We're not allowed to make these women take off that stupid wig, the weaves they got, and the makeup. Because if you did, you'd know exactly who they are. But now it's like they're wearing a mask. You don't know who that is. Okay, where we at now? Okay. Yo, they only show you the true, the true them after you marry them. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, you see the picture you put up. So put that picture back up. And you see, when you're looking at the picture, you just look at picture. These things come with spirit. Each one is a spirit. <laughs> she transformed herself to. Hey, type in women's woman's mug shots. I'm going to see what pop up. I hope no porn pop up. Porn pop up, don't show it. <laughs> Black woman mug shots. I'm just curious. Come on, IT. Help me out here. Yeah, black women mug shots. I'm just curious. Yeah, Bishop, be mindful. You might see some sister's picture in there. Oh, sister, we see a picture. We ain't going to mess with you. Go ahead, put it on the screen. Damn. Look at this. Somebody come look at this. This is the same woman. Look at the different looks. Look at the different looks. The hell is this? And you'll be like, I think she robbed. No, it's not her to rob me. I think it's this. No, it's not. No, I think it's this. It's that same woman. The eye of the needle. Yeah. <laughs> every every year she got worse. Exactly. All right. Thank you, IT. That's Levi. <laughs> so, Officer Leon, give me Second Chronicles 22. So, brothers, in order to be made in the image of God, <clears throat> this image of the Son of God, our character, our sense of morality must improve. We must not be manipulated by man or woman or your mama. What I said, or your mama. Some of you, and we've heard in Greenleaf, brothers are being manipulated by their mama. Give me that Second Chronicles 22 verse 3. Second Chronicles chapter 22 and verse 3. I always love my mama. Come on. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab. For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. You see that? His mama was his counselor. Some of you brothers sitting right here listening, your mama's your counselor. Sisters, don't marry brothers like that. He's so close to his mama. Anytime y'all get in an argument, his mama know all about it. He ain't ready for marriage. He's in a relationship with his mama. Give me Ecclesiastes 36 and 22. Ecclesiasticus 36 and 22. Two. Brothers, listen good. Never be manipulated by a woman. Whether it's your mama or a good-looking sister that you just so happen to be enticed by. Go ahead, put it on the screen. Now, does he, his mama manip I don't know nothing about this guy. Put it on the screen. Jim Jones. Does mama manipulate him? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. But you got brothers in here that do the same thing. All right, take him off the screen. Sirach 36, 22. Sirach 36 and 22. The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance. You hear that, woman? Women, sisters, the beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance. Go ahead. And a, man left, and a man loveth nothing better. And a man loveth nothing more. But there's a catch to that beauty. Read. If there be wait, wait. What's that word? If. What's that word? If. What's that word? If. Uh-huh. There be kindness, meekness, and comfort in her tongue. Then it's not her husband like other men. See that? 
They got no matter how good she looked, brothers. If she don't have what was that? What was that? Kindness. Kindness. Go ahead. Meekness. Meekness. Go ahead. Comfort. Comfort in her, in her tongue. Then it's not her husband like other men. If she ain't got that those attributes, she's ugly. I'm gonna, you're gonna hate her, brother. I, I, there have been domestic violence cases against pretty women. It's a bro. Why you bust her face like that, bro? She evil. You don't know what she did to me. She evil. Oh, story time. A couple of weeks ago, true story. Now, where was this case? I want to say Greenleaf, but I don't know if it's Greenleaf. So I'm going to give Greenleaf a okay, uh, pass. But true story, Benjamin, Jamaican. I was shocked. I thought it was Judah. And if any of you know that it's you, you can just stand up. Anyway, the brother says, yo, babe, sit down, man. Sit down. Woman, woman. Sit down, me want to show you a scripture. Here's the law, Leviticus 11. He goes, this, she's sitting right there. Leviticus, watch. I'm just true story. I ain't lying. Leviticus, wait, sister, wait. Here we go. Leviticus. Oh, oh, oh. Mm -mm. It says, and the swine. You know how you like to get your swine, you eat your pork? It says, and the swine. Though he be defied the oof and be gloving footed. Yet he should not the court. He is unclean to you. So sister, you should not be eating the swine. She said, yeah, man, let me see it. She takes the Bible. She goes, let me see. She says, whoo. <laughs> Bust the man right upside his roster head. You can't make this Benjamin. stuff up. Benjamin. The brother was in days. He saw Tweety Birds around the head. <laughs> I said, nah, nah, you can't make this stuff up. True story. Where were you at, Officer Leon? Leviticus 11. Brothers like that, you got to be on timeout. I'm sorry, Benjamin. You got to be on timeout. You cannot be an officer. You know you ain't ready for this. Go ahead. What y'all got that woman up there for? She got low self-esteem. Put on low self-esteem self on the state, on the screen. This is a sister with low self-esteem. As soon as you see her, she don't love herself, and she sure as hell ain't going to love you. But she'll tell you she got great self-esteem. That's a smoke screen. Okay. Sirach. Where we at, Officer Liam? Take Sirach. off the screen. We was at Sirach 36, 22. The beauty of a woman. Oh, we read that. Give me First Ezra 4, 26. Yes, sir. I'm jumping because I, for time's sake. First Ezra 4, 26. First Ezra, first Ezra chapter 4 and 26. Mm -hmm. Yay. Many there be that have run out of their wits for women. So Zerubbabel's talking about the simp, brother. You know this is you as we read it. Read it again. Yay. Many there be that have run out of their wits for women uh -huh. and become servants for their sakes. You won't do the work of God. You won't come to class for your woman. You won't do no traveling because your woman always needs you around. Go ahead. Many also have perished, uh -huh. have erred, and sinned for women. A lot of you go to jail because of your woman. Your good-looking, pretty demon. Go ahead. And now, do you not believe me? Is not the king great in his power? Do not all regions fear to touch him? Yet did I see him and Apame, the king's concubine, the daughter of the admirable Bardicus, sitting at the right hand of the king. And taking the crown from the king's head. Disrespectful. Go ahead. And setting it upon her, her, her own head. She also struck the king with her left hand. She smacked him. Yeah, with her weak hand. To disrespect him in front of everybody. Go ahead. Yet, she, yet also struck the king with her left hand. And yet for all this, the king gaped and gazed upon her with open mouth. That's a simp right there. There's a lot of... You notice... It's always the biggest, strongest, most powerful brothers that got that simp spirit. In all my years, that's what I see. It ain't so much the little brothers. The little brothers have it. It's the big brothers that throw down, will beat you and do all kinds. He's that weak-minded one. So yeah, all of them, he go to the gym, he's weak to the woman. Go ahead. If she laughed upon him, he laughed also. But if she took any displeasure at him, the king was fain to flatter. Mm -hmm. That she might be reconciled to him again. O ye men, how can it be but women should be strong, seeing they do thus? So give me Micah 7 and 5. Read it quick. Micah 7 and 5. Micah 7 and 5. The woman. 
In order to be a strong man, be in the image of God, brothers, your character must be strengthened. Your resolve in understanding God's laws must be increased. Come on. Micah chapter 7, verse 5. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Some of y'all tell your woman everything. We have personal meetings, councils among the men. The wife knows everything. She's putting, we have a, 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 a meeting of training. You bring your wife. She's taking pictures and putting it on damn Facebook. What the hell is wrong with you? We see, and we, brother, listen, we sit down and say, you saw what that brother's wife did? Do not raise him up. He is not to be an officer. Let him stay right where he is. So if some of you sitting there, you know, I can never be raised up because of your stupid wife and your weak, simp attitude. You're not, we're not going to allow you to destroy what God is building with your weak nature. We'll have the men's conference. Talk about personal things. The wife is, knows all about it. Okay. Yeah, I, oh, God. Where we at, Leon? Trust ye not in a friend. Uh -huh. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Mm. For the son dishonor of the father, the mother. Okay, right. that, I don't want the next one. Give me Ecclesiastes 7 and 6. A lot of you men don't like this, but we're going to read it for you. Ecclesiastes 7 and 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and 6. Yeah, this is kryptonite to some of you. For as the crackling of thorns... I mean, Ecclesiastes... Ecclesiastes... I'm doing... No, 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 no. 726, thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Ecclesiastes 7 and 26. That's what I want. And I find more bitter than death uh -huh. the woman uh -uh. whose heart is snares and nets. Some of you brothers got women like that. You got a wife like that. Her heart is snares and traps. She's always battling you, contradicting you. Go Anytime the scriptures come out, she busts you upside there with her Bible, with your Bible, hitting the head with your own damn Bible. You can't make this stuff up. Read it again. And Go I put it on the screen. Yeah, this is it. She's always leading you. Go ahead, read it again. And I find more bitter than death. And you can see the brothers, their head goes down. Go ahead. The woman whose heart is snares and nets, and her hands are as bands, who so pleaseth God? Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me ask a question. Who here is married? Raise your hand. Okay. Y'all, oh no, you're not married. You're not married? Or oh, was? Okay. Keep your hands up. I want to see something. Whose wife is currently here in this school? Keep your hand up. If your wife is here, you saw the hands go down? Now I ain't talking about, um, maybe I said it wrong. Not Detroit, not y'all, because y'all messing me up. Let me do it again. Who's married here? Not Detroit. Not Detroit. Y'all messing me up. Not Detroit. The brothers that's from here, whose wife is currently right here, if she's not here right now, keep your hand up. If she's not here, one, two, three, four, five. Now, I can assume it's because she is at work, maybe. It might be work, or she might be, okay, you can put your hands down, rebellious. Or she might be sick, you're right, she might be sick. Sick, work, or rebellious. Sick, work, or rebellious. S-W-R. Where we at, Leon? Ecclesiastes 7 and 26. Uh -huh. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets. Whose heart is snares and nets. Got and her hands as bands. Uh -huh. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her. If you want to be in the image of God, it says you must escape from her. God is telling you to kick her to the curb. Now, that's not the woman you, you just came in. Y'all just came in. I'm not talking about y'all just came in. You learning. She's learning. She's having a little more harder time. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you've been in for years, and she's still telling you to your face, hell no, I ain't keeping no law. I'm going to T.D. Jake's church in Creflo. To hell with that, what you're saying. That's what I'm talking about. That's what, read it again. And I find more bitter than death, the woman whose heart is snares and nets. And her hands as bands. Whoso please of God shall escape from her. Uh huh. But the sinner. But the sinner, the wicked brother, shall be taken by her. You want to stay with her all your life, and you see she's wicked as hell. God says He can't use men like you. You're not in His image. 
Okay, no, you're an image of the white man. Give me Ezekiel 13, 17. This is another kryptonite scripture for women and simps. Bishop, don't forget the brothers who their wives get Sabbath sickness. Oh, the Sabbath only time sickness. she's sick is on the Sabbath. Why? Right. She got cramps. She got a headache. You never see her. Where's your wife? She's sick. Yep. Only on the Sabbath. She goes to work Monday through Friday, but on Friday night into Saturday, all of a sudden she's sick. And mm. Sunday she recovers. Right. <laughs> that, no, the, Some of you men in leadership, your wife never come to the school and we're not stupid. Right. That's who we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And you've been here for years and your wife got excuse over and over. I know one family, the wife had a baby and it's been over a year, she ain't never come back to the school yet. Wow, you see that? Hey, but that's why I said, you captains, don't be submitting names for uh, being raised up for men like that. I think that's on the evaluation sheet about the family. If they ain't, and she ain't here doing this work, don't raise brothers like that. Let them stay, a, he can stay a soldier, let him stay a member. Let him just stay right there till he gets an idea. Ezekiel 13, 17. Ezekiel 13, 17. Likewise, thou son of man. Set thy face against the daughters of thy people. Does it say play with these women? Set thy face against the daughters of thy people. Set your face against them. Why? Because they ain't right. Talk about these rebellious ones. God command. That's a command. Read it again. Set thy face against the daughters of thy people, which prophesy out of their own heart and prophesy thou against them. God says prophesy against these women that talk. Well, I feel and I think God don't give a damn what you feel or what you think, sister. That's how you deal with these women. Oh, no, you're not supposed to talk to them. Oh, that's how God tells us to talk to them. That's how we're going to talk to them. She like it or leave it. Love it or leave it. Get the hell out. That's it. God gave us a commandment. We must fulfill it. The sin brother saying, no, he don't want, no. Uh-uh, I can't do it. Then go, brother. This ain't for you. Revelation 14.1. Bishop also, on all the social media platforms we got, kick them off there also. That's right. If they just there and you check six months, eight months, nine months, they don't answer one thing, kick them off. Mm -hmm. Don't have them there taking up space. Let the lively sisters that care about what you're doing in the congregation, you leave them in the social media platforms. Because a lot of times they're spies. Right. They're just there taking information, trying to find out what's going on because they're spies. Kick them off. Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked in lower lamb, stood on the Mount Zion. This lamb is Christ, go ahead. And with him in 140 and 4,000, mm -hmm. having his father's name written in their foreheads. Read. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung it as it were a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 140 and 4,000 which were redeemed from the earth. So these are men. Go ahead. These are they which were not defiled with women. They were not manipulated. They were not, they were not confused by women. Some of you brothers, as soon as you get married, we see the real you. We'll see a brother strong in the Lord, power of his might, and then he gets married, and that simp spirit comes out. So this ain't the same brother that was so strong and powerful. Now he get married, look at him. He's all weak and always stuttering. What the hell is wrong with you, bro? We going over here to war. Oh, I can't, brother. I got to take care of the baby. Well, where's your wife? Home. What the hell is going on here? Read that again. These are they which were not defiled with women. So the Lord can't, if you're defiled by your woman, God can't use you. Just stay where you at. Stay right there, go ahead. For they are virgins. We are virgins to being corrupt, to the corruption of the world. These are they which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. Meaning whatever Christ commands us in his Bible, we're going to do it. Go ahead. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the lamb. Read. And in their mouth was found no guile. No deceit is in our mouth. We're going to tell you what the Bible says. If it hurts your feeling, it hurts your feeling. But we're going to tell you, thus saith the Lord. Go ahead. For they are without fault. We are be without fault. Before the throne of God. Okay. Now, what about, for, oh, there's a sister right now. What about 1 Corinthians 7.33? Give me that. What about 1 Corinthians 7.33? What about it? We're going to read it. Come on, y'all can put it on the screen. Y'all don't wait for me to look for it. Okay. So that's Rome, uh, Revelation 14. Y'all should have put it up when I was. We passed the moment. Now we're going to another moment. 1 Corinthians 7, 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 33. But he that is married, careth, but he that is married careth for the things that are of the world. Uh -huh. How he may please his wife. How he may please his wife. Go ahead. 
Was that the whole verse? Yes, sir. Okay. He that is married, care for the things of the world, how he may please the world. Right now, the simp brothers are going, yeah, 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 yeah. What about that? So you marry this woman. Let me tell you something. You marry this woman. I want the jolly. Go put it on the screen, yeah. Put it on the screen. Now, this is a good family. Strong man, strong in the Lord, power of his might. His wife is in order. The children are in order. They've gotten the kingdom. This is what we're all working for. Take it off the screen. Take it off the screen. So I'm going to give you a an example. Please his wife. Everybody say, I'm going to please my wife. Scriptures say that. Listen, simps, please your wife. You marry this woman. You have children with this woman. You get her a house. You get her a car. And you pay all the bills. She's really brought nothing to the table. You've taken care of her. Okay? And then she has the audacity to fix her black ashy lips and say, I'm not happy. What? what, what, what? <laughs> we get married. You have children. I got you a house. I got you a car. I pay all your bills. I'll take care of you. And you fix your black ashy lips and tell me I'm not happy. Why isn't she happy? She will make up some, some lie she's conjured. Okay? Because guess what? White women, they know their husband's into baseball or basketball. They go out and learn. They want to learn the sport, and they'll have sport parties for their man. Sport parties. Okay? She, the black woman, <laughs> you come home, you, you read in the Bible. You want quiet time to study. What you doing? Uh, I'm studying. Yeah? Uh, when you going to spend time with me? Babe, give me, give me a break. Can I study here? I'm, I need leisure time. No, leisure time. You came for work all day. You don't spend no time with me. Damn it, I'm not happy. What the hell? You got this house here. You got this nice car. You don't pay for nothing. You got lovely kids. Yeah, I'm not happy. She's watching Atlanta Housewives. She's looking at all, everything corrupt. She's, she's watching it to, to feed her filthy mind. Now she brings it home to you. You know what she wants you to be? Put it on the screen. She wants you to be this guy. She wants you to be, when women say they're not happy, she wants you to be the jolly chimp. Hey, babe, babe, look at me. Ha, 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 look. Are you laughing? Go giggle, giggle, giggle. Ain't nobody got time for that BS. We are not your jolly chimp. The hell is this? Bishop, she unappreciated yeah. too. You're unhappy. Yeah. You're doing Make yourself shit. happy. There you go. Make yourself happy. How about that? You know, brother working, brother doing this, doing that. I'm not happy. Make yourself happy. Find sisters that fear the Lord. Build a relationship with them. You know, make yourself happy. You understand? You, you know, you, that's what they do. Read a book, sister. Yeah. Read a book. Yes. Find, find some to do and make yourself happy. The joy, what the scripture said, the joy of the Lord is what? Is your strength. Is your strength. Have some joy in serving God and make yourself happy in serving exactly. God, man. We are not your jolly chimp, sister, to sit around and make you laugh 24 hours a day. What the hell is wrong with you? Bishop, that's that sister. Remember when David came back from rejoicing in yes. battle? In uh, 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 21. Yeah, read that, read that. Yep, that's her. Brothers like quiet time. We like time. We like leisure time. Time to study. Hey, hey, brothers, if you're talking to a sister, and every time you mention to her that you are about to spend some time with the brother, she got a problem with that, do not marry her. That's that, that's that's red flags. That's a sign that she already told you what's gonna happen. That's what Bishop is talking about. She's gonna have always. She should be pushing you to spend time with the brothers. Not every time you see going to spend time. Oh well, you barely talked to me on the phone. Why you got it? Hey, sis, I don't think this is going to work out. That's it. I'm telling you, that's a bad sign. Take this sign. Don't look at her. Don't look at her pretty face. Just walk away. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, they're likewise. Sometimes they will tell you, like you hang out with brothers, you come home, oh, you drink too much. How did you know I drink? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Don't spend time. They're going to use different type of tactic trying to overcome you. You understand? And we ain't talking about domestic violence. Because in her mind right now, well, what if he beats you? We ain't talking about he beats you. What if he calls you names? We ain't talking about he calls you names. We talking about the good brother who's, who works nine to five, comes home, studies the scriptures to keep them, pays all the bills. That's what we talking about. 
and smiles at you once in a while and gets some butt from you once in a while. That's what we talking about. Where you going, Asaf? Where we at? It was 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 20. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 20. Then David returned to bless his household. And Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and said, How glorious was the king of Israel today, who uncovered himself to the day in the eyes of the handmaids of his servants. And one of the vain fellows shamelessly uncovered himself. And David said unto Michal, It was before the Lord which chose me before thy father, and before all his house who appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore will I play before the Lord. And I will yet be more vile than thus, and I will be base in my own sight, and of the maid, maid service which thou hast spoken of, of them shall I be had in honor. Therefore, Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no child until the day of her death. Before she rejoiced that her husband is king, the most richest, most powerful man at that time, she's upset because he's rejoicing in victory for the Lord. We got women like that in this truth. Yes. We yes. got women who will be mad. They will interfere. On the Sabbath day primarily with their garment, with their food preparation, with them leaving, with them waking up. We got women who married the most powerful men in IOS. And destroy them. They destroy them. Yes. We got, we got sisters who marry high ranking brothers. The brother take her with two kids and she tried to destroy them. Damn. Two kids. I'm talking about high ranking men. Some of you brothers, I'm telling you, some of you don't know your worth, man. When you start becoming an officer, listen, listen, you are a high working man. You are what Kevin Samuel call uh, high, high, value. high value man. Mm -hmm. That's what you are. Yeah. You're looking at about money. Listen, you are the prophets. You are high value man. That's right. you, you just don't know you're a high value man. I'm telling you, you're, high value. you're worth more than a billion dollars. Yeah. You just don't know it. Uh, you're a top G. She belongs to the street. <laughs> Boss. <laughs> And then they hate the bishop because the bishop is trying to transform you with the word of God into that high value man. Mm -hmm. Then they direct their hate towards leadership. We had a sister tell her man once, you sound like Bishop Nathaniel. Mm -hmm. You not Bishop Nathaniel. <laughs> then who am I? The nigga that I made you to be. <laughs> Serve me. And she's gone now. Yep. She was one of them scoffers. Yep. Exactly. Give 1 Corinthians 11, 8 and 9. We go over this, but it seems like with all the reports that I get reading, you men are not, you don't, you don't believe it. Your faith is weak. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 11 and 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Talking about Adam and Eve, go ahead. Neither was the man created for the woman. Now this goes all the way up until today. Neither was the man created for the woman. You got to get that in your head, brother. Go ahead. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. She was created for you. Not the other way around. You are not to be her jolly chimp with the symbols. What the hell is this? And we see some of you like, did you do anything to please this damn woman? When it comes to the most high, nah, I ain't really too into pleasing him. But I want to please her so I can get some booty. You got something's wrong with you. You're not eligible to be a, a ranking man in Israel. Right. So right there, most high God, Christ, man, woman. That's the order. Right. In the world is Satan. White Jesus, woman, and man. That's what most women today on the right, right there, that's what they want. But that's not what they're going to get when they come in here. That's right. All praise. See, I, I ain't getting no bomb, but thank you, brothers. I appreciate you. <laughs> hey, Bishop. Bishop, I got a heavy scripture for what you just said. Can we go to Proverbs 14 and 1. This is for you crazy Israelite women that don't care about your house and God. Proverbs 14 and 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house. You know how a wise woman build a house? They see that they have a man of God and they cherish him. Because according to the scriptures, if you believe, they're going to be the leaders of the earth. And that's rare. You finally have a man that's serving God the right way. You support him and you build your house up by following his lead in the commandments. Read on. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with How her hands. How does she pluck it down? She interferes with him working for God. She wants him to work for Esau more than for God, or work for her more than she, or you tearing your house down. So now, what yeah, you listen, you notice uh, what Deacon says 100, 
you know this, she never complained when you're doing the eight hours for Esau. Right. You understand? So when you come home now, you're trying to do the work for the Lord. Everything break loose. All demons come out. So with that, let's go to the next book. Let's go to the next book. This will help build, building our self-esteem. We're still dealing with that. Building our character. Put it up on the screen. Here's a book. Shout out to Deacon Isaac. Thank you so much. He came in the mail this week. Moscow I icons. Let's go inside the book. Okay. Uh, okay, there's a black and white. Can we zoom in? All right. Now, that's a black and white. I'm going to show you the color in a moment. But I want to read. Officer Lim, read that. 175, 179. Blessed be the host of the celestial king. The celestial king is Christ, in case you didn't know it. Go ahead. The church militant. This is the problem all the world has against Israel not in Christ. They say, you Israelites are too militant. The church of God has always been militant. Always. We're not violent. We're not abusive, aggressive like that. But we are militant when it comes to teaching God's prophecies, his laws, his commandments. Everybody understand that? Raise it up. Raise it up. Come on, read that. State of preservation. Major and minor losses of the paint layer with insertions of fresh gesso grounding. The representation of the burning citadel. Oh, uh, jump down to what says the celestial host for time's sake. Yes, sir. See, 131, it says the celestial host right there. The celestial host is proceeding from the burning citadel, viewed as Kazan. Kazan is in Georgia, Russia. Mm -hmm. Okay, pay attention. Which Ivan the Terrible captured. I, now, we all heard of Ivan the Terrible. Go ahead. Which Ivan the Terrible captured from the Tartars in 1552 and likewise as some symbolizing a mundane city of sin mm -hmm. towards the celestial Jerusalem within which are the enthroned virgin and the infant Jesus. So in this picture, you're going to see Ivan the Terrible. You're going to see the Virgin Mary and the infant Jesus. Go ahead. As its head in the circle is the Archangel Michael on horseback. You're going to see the Archangel Michael on horseback with a halo. Go ahead. The captain of the heavenly host. The captain of the heavenly host. Go amongst ahead. whom we see the martyrs mingling with historical, primarily Russian personages. Hanging with primarily Russian personages. People, meaning people. Go ahead. Disposed centrally in the... Go up. In the imperial crown and holding the cross is either the Emperor Constantine or Vladimir Monomachus. So they said the man you're going to see holding the cross is either Vladimir or Constantine. Go ahead. A founder of the Russian princely in Sarsis dynasty. The armored helmeted rider holding the enormous scarlet banner and galloping forward in the wake of the Archangel Michael may represent Ivan the Terrible. And the group riding along behind Constantine or Vladimir are the Kyvan saints, Prince Vladimir with his sons Boris and Gleb. Leading the top row are Prince Dmitry Don Donsky and his patron, St. Demetrius of Thessalonica, astride a white horse, while leading the bottom row are Prince Alexander Nevsky and St. George. St. George is the dragon slayer. I want to go to the image for time's sake. Let's go to the color image. Okay, well, look at look at here on the left, my left. You see New Jerusalem. We're gonna, we're gonna, yeah. You see New Jerusalem. You see Mary and Christ. Y'all see what color they are? You see Mar Ike, the Archangel Michael on the horse in the front, black, black, right there. You see all the angels around, all black. Okay, now this was painted in Russia a long time ago. Okay. Now you got uh, Ivan the Terrible behind um, uh, Michael. Right, go to right behind Michael with the horse. Yes, right there's Ivan the Terrible. Now go back. You see the one with the cross, either Constantine or what was the name? Or Vladimir, right there. Yes, right there. Now let's go. Let's get some close-ups. These were the rulers of Russia. Wait, zoom to the side. Can you pull to the side? Look to Kazan. Top right, top right. Yes. Zoom in on that. We had destroyed this city in Georgia, Russia, and set it on fire. Okay. That was Esau. That was the Khazars. Right. Look at all these black men. That's what I want you to see. We have not learned true history. Go to the next picture. Look, there's a close-up of New Jerusalem with Mary and Christ, with the angels. Everybody's black. There was no fire. And burn the faces, like they like to say. Give me the next image. 
There's Michael on the horse with the red horse. You got Ivan the Terrible behind him. Now they all lived in different time periods, but this era was called the militant church. These were warriors for the cross, as they called it. Okay, give me the next image. Everybody's black. From the hooter to the tutor. Look at that. This stuff makes my teeth white. It makes me excited. It makes me rejoice when I see this. Of course, today, when you look at our image, what we got? Drug dealers and pimps. The hell is this? Look at the way they dress, brothers. The crowns on their heads. We've never, there's never been a movie that showed stuff like this. Never, ever, ever. And when you ask people like the Denzels and the Idra Elbadel or Samuel Jackson, you need good white people in these movies in order to do anything. And you can't show too many black people in seats of power. That's what they say. Okay. Give me the next one. That was it? Okay. From there. So, brothers, looking at that, we got to understand that we are at war. And more enemies of God have risen their ugly heads. You may understand that? Yes, sir. Give me that book right there. They hate this book. They like to try to discredit the brother. We the Black, black Jews. Jews. This is volume one and two by Yosef A. Ben Yahakin. He, he recently passed away about a year or two ago. Let's go inside the book. Okay, now I didn't do a good job keeping the pages flat. Uh Zoom into the top. Do the, yeah, do, zoom into the top. Let me see. Uh, read from the top, Leon. Yes, sir. At this point, there needs, to, there needs to be no more underscoring. The last observation is more than enough to explain the Semitic and or white racism in Israel that controls the destiny of all of the black Jews. You see that? Like our brother, what's his name? The foot basketball player. Amari Stoudemire is controlled by Amalekites. Controlled by Edomites. He did an interview on Clubhouse saying that everything the Israelites are saying is correct. Then white folks got mad at him, at him, made him go into another room in Clubhouse, and he condemned us and said everything we teach is wrong. I, I'm like, what the hell is going on here? We don't. Cochin, Yemenite. Now, Cochin is uh, in India. Go ahead. Yemenite. That's uh, Saudi Arabia. Falasha. And that's Ethiopia. Go ahead. Et cetera. But why don't the white Russian Jews, shown below from page one of the same publication and editor on November 16th to November 30th, 1973, volume 15, number four have, to go through the process of converting and reaccepting Judaism, like the black African Jews? See, he, so he's bringing out a point. He says white Russian Jews will come from another country, go to Israel. They don't got to convert. But if you black, you got to convert. You gotta, they're going to they're gonna circumcise you. You got to go through rituals to be what they call, what they would claim Jewish. Go ahead. The answer, plain and simple. White racism. That's what nobody wants to admit. It's all white racism. Go ahead. By those European and European American Jews that control Israel. Their fellow white Jews are exempt, although they may not know the first fact about the Hebrew religion or culture. He said they, they don't know nothing about the Torah or Tanakh, but they are exempt because they are Edomites. Everybody see that? That's right. Go ahead. The above Jews do not go through the process of converting and re-accepting Judaism. Those at the bottom must. Why? So those are the black ones. Go ahead. Like the references to the above, the propaganda that Ethiopia turned against White Israel is equally as ridiculous to suggest some sort of a conspiracy on the part of the total Ethiopian people and their government because of Arab oil. But the fact is that Ethiopia has much more than enough of our own oil. The action of Ethiopia in breaking of diplomatic relations, etc. with Israel is this, Africa's nation's right, which is bound to her obligation to defend all others. Give me the next page, and I just want the highlight part. Zoom in. Mm -hmm. Read that. Rising Negro and or black anti-Semitism in the ghettos. That's what's going on. Black anti-Semitism. Go ahead. This writer, formerly a practicing so-called black Jew myself, is definitely convinced. Now he says formerly because he gave it up with all the racism that came from white Israelis. He said, I can't do this no more. This is ridiculous. I give it up. Read it again. The, this writer, formerly a practicing so-called black Jew myself, is definitely convinced it is nothing else but just that. Racist, religious bigotry. 
For white Jews in the Western Hemisphere, the United States of America and the rest of North America, Mexico and Canada, Central America, South America, and the Caribbean islands, the same as white Christians and white Muslims, for the most part, see themselves as a race of people who are distinctly separate from their co-religionist black Jews anywhere, much less the so-called American Negro Jews mm -hmm. in the United States of America who are not even tolerated. In the United States of America, black Jews are not tolerated. That's what y'all see going on. I don't get one bob. That's what goes. Thank you. Thank you, IT. But that's what goes on today. No tolerance. We don't like these black Jews. If you're, you don't do what we say, we don't like you. Go ahead. Behind the secret doors of the above citations, it is necessary for black Jews to uncover and bring to the open scrutiny of the general community of man these forms of Jewish racism and Jewish religious bigotry. Let's get the next page. Zoom in. I don't see why we should continue excluding these black Jews from the greater body of Judaism in this country solely on the basis that some of us wish to maintain the color line of racial prejudice around us. Then you recall one of the Psalms of Solomon, which he co-opted from the indigenous African scribe Aminab, the map, see page 355 of chapter that reads, my hair is woolly and my color as swarthy, meaning black, as the robes of my father, king. So this is a belief from the Ethiopian Bible, if I'm not mistaken. Go ahead. My hair is woolly as my color, as swarthy as the robes of my father's kingdom. Therefore, I am black and comely, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. See, fallacy of racial Jews for similar biblical quotations. See page 400 of this section. Do not call my people here in the United States of America Negro Jews or colored Jews because a Negro or colored Nomenclature. Nomenclature is rejected in total by each and every consciously self-respecting African. Jew, Gentile, Muslim, Yoruba, Voodooist, etc. included. The reason for the projection of this term is obvious. As shown on the 17th century CE map of Africa before the Portuguese changed their term Negrita to the point where the British could relabel the area of West Africa by the imperial's, imperial's name Negro land. We're going to show you that map in a moment. Go ahead. And the indigenous African people, Negroes. The map of Africa showed Negro land. Appears on page 34 of chapter 1. Take note. It is the slave master's insult to his slaves, black Jews, Ethiopian Jews, African American Jews, Israelites, Agar, and other titles which we shall tell you to call us are the only correct names acceptable to, to us. Not what anyone else said it should be because he, she has been calling us that for over the last three to four hundred years. Right. We'll tell you what to call us. You don't make up your own name for us. Hey, real quick, give me, I sent you a link. Watch this. A four part. It says antisemitism.org. Yep, put that up. Here's another group. Can we see the top? Can we see the top? Read that. CAA launches four part debunked. Black Hebrew Israelites Instagram. So what Ben, what Ben Yohanan was talking about the white Jewish racism, this is evidence right here. Here's another group called the CAA, which stands for Campaign Against Anti-Semitism. And look, raise it up. Look, now I'm going to see the picture. Here's episode one, taking it too far. And look who they got there in the background. Ah, you, I see. Okay. Uh, raise it up. I want the video. Give me the video. Raise it up. Yeah, click. Let's see how they debunk us. Let's see what they get as a spokesperson. Oh, the black woman. Yeah. They found the black woman to be the spokesperson to try to debunk us. Well, I want to see her debunk us. Raise it up so we can see the whole video. Brothers, I need y'all to, the whole, brothers, y'all cut off the whole top of the video. It's the black woman doing the talking. Yes. Come on, I want to see how debunk us. Kanye West, people like him are not Jewish. Wait, First stop, all, stop, stop. I'd have to agree with that. That, hey, IT, pay attention. 
Look up the suffix ish, I-S-H. That's all I want. Ish. Doc tend to concur with her. We're not Jewish. Let's take a look at it. Ish, please. What does it mean when they say they're, they're Jewish? Jewish, Jewish. Read that. Ish, a suffix used to form adjectives from nouns with the sense of belonging to, British, Danish, English, Spanish, after the manner of having the characteristics of like, babyish, girlish, mulish, addicted to, inclined, or tending to, bookish, freakish, near or about. That one, near or about. Raise it up. Click that one right to ish. Uh, read that. Use to modify or moderate something previously stated or as a vague reply. A vague reply to Go a ahead. question. Somewhat. Somewhat. In a way. In a way. I'm somewhat a Jew. I'm in a way a Jew. Go ahead. Not exactly. I'm not exactly a Jew. That's what ish means when they say Jew-ish. Does everybody understand that? Yes, sir. Let's go back to the video, please. And start at the beginning of that video. That's why they don't bring us on CNN. That's why, what's that British white guy? Pierce. Pre Man. Pierce Edomite. I like that Edomite. I like that guy. I want to go on the show. Get me on the show. Or the Breakfast Club. Yeah. Go ahead. Play the video. Kanye West, people like him are not Jewish. First of all, I am Jew also. The 12 lost tribes of Hebrew. Do the math. Do your research on it. That is a figment of their imagination. Mm. And it's an insult to actual black Jewish people. When particularly the black community is speaking about you know, black Jews and why isn't someone like Kyrie or Kanye allowed to call themselves Jewish. I cannot be anti-Semitic if I know where I come from. I cannot be anti-Semitic if I know where I come from. Kyrie, Kanye, they are not Jewish. And you are not actually working to build coalitions with actual black Jewish people. And we still have to figure out why. Maybe it's just because the black community doesn't really know about us. Maybe it's because black Jewish communities haven't made an effort to reach out to the larger black community. There, there are probably a lot of reasons. Um, the black Jewish people are trying to tell folks that black Hebrew Israelite ideology is dangerous. So now, sister, now what's her name? Her name is... Tova the poet. If she wants to, we'll sit there. We'll talk with you. We'll bring on one of the radio shows, the classes. Come on and talk with us. We'll explain to you. The reason there's a problem, number one, yes, society hates you. I'm going to tell you that straight. Most people don't know about a black Jewish community. Nobody knows about you. You don't exist. Why? Because the white Jewish community doesn't promote you at all. They don't want nothing to do with you. Mm. Okay? Now, if you want to sit down with us, we'll sit down with you. We'll share with you in the scriptures that we're not Jewish, that we are the real Jews. Okay, we're the real Israelites. That's what we're saying, okay? And we'll sit and we'll show, we're not to be converted. We're not to be assimilated, okay, into white Jewish society. We can be at peace, but we're going to teach the truth of the Bible. Understand that. Put a picture up. She got a haircut. So she's on Instagram. Now, if we can get in contact with her, we'll sit down, we'll talk with you, Tova the Poet. We will talk with you and share with you what the Bible really says. Hey, give me 1 Maccabees 11.21. First Maccabees chapter 11, verse 21. Then certain ungodly persons who hated their own people. Brothers and sisters, there's some of our people who hate their own people. And white society, Jewish society, Amalekites, Edomites... They use them as figureheads to condemn their own people. Just pay them a few dollars. Read it again. Then certain ungodly persons who hated their own people went unto the king and told him that Jonathan besieged the tower. Right. Hey, give me the next uh, Instagram clip. There should be another clip in there. You can take it off the screen. Okay, right there. Read that. The black, the black Hebrew Israel, the black Israelite Take Hebrews, me off the screen. The black Israelite Hebrews are an extremist black supremacist group 
that asserts that they are the true Jews. So here's the hypocrisy. White folks can say they're the chosen people. But if we say it, we're black supremacists and we're filled with hatred. Are you kidding me? Go ahead. The group has harassed and intimidated Jews on the streets of the United Kingdom. That's a lie. Go in ahead. the London Underground. That's a lie. And is thought to have been connected to the New Jersey kosher grocery store shooting in 2019. Do you see how they push that lie? And they can never prove it. That's why they don't sit down with us. Because we're going to prove them a daggone liar. Understand that. Go ahead, read on. The or first, oh, the first, Go ahead. the first episode of the debunked Black Hebrew Israelite series, which features podcasts against anti-Semitism, guest Tova the poet explains why the movement is considered so dangerous. Now there should be another clip in there, or is it the same clip? No, it's probably the same clip. I'm sorry. Okay, go to the next book. So she says we're not Black Jews. We're not real. Okay, really, it's a figment of our imagination. All right, we gave you Bible scripture. Now here's some history. Okay, this is Africa being an accurate description of the regions of Egypt, Barbary, Libya, and Bilidu. But I can't pronounce that. Give, let's go inside the book, please. Now this book was published back in the early 1600s. Read that, Liam. I know that, I know this hard language. Yes, sir. Notice it's Africa. Watch what it says. Africa. Many Jews also are scattered over this region. Some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed, inhabiting both sides the river Nigger. Others are Asian strangers, Asian strangers who fled thither either from the deflation... De desolation, sorry, let me read it. Desolation. From the desolation of Jerusalem by Vespasian or from Judea, wasted and depopulated by the Romans. Persians... Saracens, that means Muslims, the Moors, and Christians. Or else, uh, what is that? Such as came out of Europe. These are black Jews now. Whence they were banished out of some parts of Italy in the year 1342. So it says the black Jews was kicked out of Italy in 1342. Out of Spain in the year 1462. Out of the low country, that's the Netherlands, in 1350. Out of France, we were kicked out in 1403. Out of England in 1422, these all defer in habit and are divided into several tribes, having no dominion, though both wealthy and numerous, but, what's that word, Dis despised, despised of all nations, see that? And so abominated by the Turks, that's Turkey, that they are not admitted to be Mohammedans, meaning Muslims, unless first baptized, and then no otherwise made use of than to receive their customs, meaning money, and gather in their taxes. So there's history books that prove the Jews are black. Did everybody see that? Coming out of Africa. Next one. So Tova the Poet. Next picture, please. Tova the Poet. The floor is yours. Okay. Put the next picture up, please. Okay. Read the bottom part, Leon, bottom left. Yemen Jews and Falashas. Berber. Moorish and Negro Jews. Now look at these Negro Jews. Now let's go over to Ethiopia first. Abyssinia. It says Abyssinia. Right there. Abyssinia. Y'all should know. Y'all should have an understanding of the maps a little bit. Abyssinia is Ethiopia. You got Yahwism. That's Yahwism. That's Hebrews there. You got, zoom in. It might get a little blurred, but can you zoom in a little closer? Uh, Tabili, something Jews. You got Hebrew at the top right there. Everybody see what I'm looking at? Yeah. And you got Falasha right above that S, says Falasha. So these are what the scholars have put together. Now let's pull back. Give me bottom, center, bottom. The very bottom, right down there. Right, look at that. You got Loando Jews. Uh, you got Mavumbo Jews in that area called Gaboon. Raise it up. Set. San Tome Jews. This is all in Africa. Okay? Now, if you go there today, the people have already been destroyed and colonized. They don't know who they are, just like many of our people today. I'm showing you how big a mission we have. Nobody else is going to gather the lost sheep of Israel. We must do it, brothers. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. Can I get a bomb, somebody? Okay, raise it. Lower it. Lower it. Zoom in the blue highlighted area. 
You got uh, uh, Benny Ephraim. You got Ephraimites there. Over in Nigeria, right there, it says Levite cities. Levite cities over in Nigeria where it says, uh, let me look. Pull to the side where it says Dahomey. Dahomey, right there. There's a movie, The Woman King. You got Dahomey Jews, Jewish traces in the, amongst the Ashanti, okay? A lot of the Ashanti was taken to Jamaica, okay? Uh, let's go up the side on the left. Let's go up right there. In Senegambia, you got Judeo-Paganism. They were mixing uh, the history with paganism. Low, uh, Lam Lam, once a Jewish colony. Timbuktu, we all heard of that. Uh, it was a book, uh, I mean, a book. A huge library was there that was burned down. Jewish Kingdom of Granada. On the left, it says medieval Jewish Kingdom, uh, Kamenut. I can't pronounce that word. But I'm showing you that the scholars know where the Israelites were scattered. And they took us from these regions and brought us to um, the Americas and the Caribbean. They took us to Iran, Iraq, India. Uh, lower it somewhat. I didn't make this map up. Okay. All that's in red are where the Israelites were scattered. Okay. All that's in red where the Israelites were scattered. Okay. You got uh, amongst over there in Spain, they got a red arrow. In Spain, right under Spain, right. All these Jews, black Jews throughout North Africa. And what happened after this time period? We were colonized. We were enslaved and colonized. Word it like that. Everybody understand what happened? Yes, now today, the people are like, we don't know who we are. We don't know we're Jews. And they go by many tribal names. Okay. Give me the next picture. Okay. This is a map of, Nick. can you zoom into the bottom, bottom left where the pictures are? See, it says Negro land. This is what um, Ben Yahak, Yahan, Yahanan was talking about. These maps that's, uh, that say Negro land. Negro land is the name they put on the Israelites. They called us Negroes. Negro is a Spanish word. When they kicked us out of Spain, many of us came here. They called us Negroes in Spain. We came into Africa. They still called us Negroes. Okay. Let's zoom in to the red area with next to Papua Guinea. Guinea, red area. Zoom in right there. Zoom in. Yes. Zoom in right there. Do y'all see what it says? Kingdom of Judah. It says, or Huida. They changed the name from Judah to Huida, which means birds. And you got these stupid Christian apologetics and go, that didn't mean Judah. It says Judah. Okay? The kingdom of Judah. Now, this was after slavery had already begun. But this area was Negro land. Give me the next page, the next picture, please. Okay, there's another one. Proper Guinea, kingdom of Judah. Y'all see it? Right there, Kingdom of Judah, J-U-D-A, or we, the slave coast. That's where they got a This was near the end as they were starting to depopulate us, okay? Give me the next book. So we'll sit down with you, and we'll go through the Torah and the Tanakh, whatever you want to go through, okay? The Negroes and the Jews by a white woman called Lenora E. Burson. Let's go inside. Liam, read that where yes, it says sir. Negroes claim. Negroes claim to be... Jewish is legitimate. Is legitimate. This is what the white woman said. It's legitimate claim. Go ahead. The land of Israel is located in Western Asia and borders on North Africa. All of the native inhabitants of that region were non-white. When Spain expelled its Jews in 1492, many of them went to Africa. It seems probable that some of them were brought later to America as slaves. The the spiritual never sing of African rivers is all is always the Jordan or the Red Sea. They don't sing about African chiefs or kings. It's David or Moses or some other Jewish characters from the Bible. We are the real Jews. That's right. Hey, give me first Mac. We're gonna read this quickly on first Maccabees three nineteen because we're almost done. We're almost done. I know I kept you here a while, but we're almost done. First Maccabees 3.19. Come on, Leon. First Maccabees chapter 3 and verse 19. For the victory of battle standeth not in the multitude of an host, but strength cometh from heaven. They come against us in much pride and iniquity to destroy us. I want all you men to understand the same mentality our brothers the Maccabees had. We have to have the same mentality. Come on. They come against us in much pride and iniquity to destroy us. And our they come wives. against us with much pride. The ADL. SPLC, the Canary Mission, the CAA. Go ahead. 
and our wives and children, and to spoil us. But we fight for our lives and our laws. Wherefore the Lord himself will overthrow them before our face. And as for you, be ye not afraid of them. Now as soon as he had left off speaking. What verse are you at? Verse 23. That's all I wanted. Okay. Give me the, this next picture right here. Put that up. I want you to see how they twist and manipulate. This is the Canary Mission. Read that, Leon. Canary Mission. Watch Bishop Nathaniel, head of the BHI group, Israel United in Christ, direct his followers to tear down and destroy the Star of David, the age-old icon of Judaism. Nathaniel calls it a filthy symbol. Leon, can you get me that in the book of Acts about the Star of Remfam? Before you play the video, the Star of Remfam. Or oh, I forgot what it says. It's been a while. Molech, I forgot what it says. Somebody help me out. And the star which you had. Acts chapter 7, verse 43. Go ahead. Yea, ye took up the tabernacle of Moloch and the star of your god, Remphan, figures which ye made to worship them, and I will carry you away beyond Babylon. We went into slavery for having the star of Moloch, the star of Remphan. That was one of the reasons we went into Babylon. And we, uh, many of our people to this day hold on to that image. Now let's play. The, now the video, they're saying it's, I'm doing it against them. Let's watch the video. Play the sound, this sound. <laughs> Come on, y'all. So we got to tear down all these filthy, evil symbols. <laughs> Break this thing up. Tear down! That's right! <laughs> Come, 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 Now, that wasn't even against so-called white people. This was the one of the original schools that we had at UPK. So now that we came to the understanding of the Star of Molech, we tore it down. It had nothing to do with white folks right. at all. But they're so, they always play victim. Oh, it's against us. I don't give a damn about you. I ain't thinking about you. The hell is this? Bishop. And I bet you if you check, there's more black uh, Israelites with that symbol than them, right. than those white people. If you check them groups, they still uphold that star. So how she targeted to you doing it against Jewish people? Right. That's a damn lie. Right. They, they saw the full vigil. They know what it was about. But it's about to deceive the minds of the people to make them think that we are hateful or want to do harm to Jewish people. Right. Understand that. I better know what time we're living in. Give me Micah 4 and 11. We read Micah 4 and 10 earlier. Now we want verse 11. We're almost done, brothers. Don't worry. I know you're tired. It's going to be okay. Micah chapter 4, verse 11. Now also many nations are gathered against thee. Many nations are gathered against us, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. That say, let her be defiled. Let the Israelites, us, be defiled. Go ahead. And let our, and let our eye look upon Zion. When it says let our eye look upon Zion, I mean let's take the land. That's what the nations want to do. Go ahead. But and they, that's what they did. Go ahead. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord. But the white man who took the land of Zion know not the thoughts of the Lord. Go ahead. Neither understand they his counsel. They don't understand the Torah. They don't understand the Tanakh. Go ahead. For he shall gather them as the sheaves into the floor. He's going to gather them as the sheaves into the floor. Watch this. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron. God is going to transform us into an instrument of war. Not on this side of the world. When we get, uh, what's the word, translated out of here and taken on the eastern side of the world, the Bible says, read that again, 13. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thy horn iron, and I will make thy hoofs brass, and thou shalt beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain and unto the Lord. We're going to take their wealth, go ahead. And their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. I hope y'all see what's going to happen prophetically. Not now, not in America, but when we're delivered from here. This is what is going to happen. Read on, Leah. Now, gather thyself in troops, O daughter of troops. He have, the, he have laid siege against us. They shall smite the judge of Israel with a rod upon the cheek. So they killed the Savior. They killed Christ, right? But thou, Bethlehem Ephrath, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me. That is to be ruler in Israel. That's Christ, King of kings, Lord of lords. That's what Matthew, write this down. 
Matthew 2, verse 6 says the same thing. That's where it's quoted from. Read on. Whose going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. So Christ has always been prophesied to be the king from of old. Go ahead. Therefore will he give them up until the time that she which travaileth have brought forth. So God gave us up until the time that we start to wake up, which is happening now. Go ahead. Then the remnant of his brethren shall return unto the children of Israel. That's what y'all seeing now. The remnant of his brethren shall return to the children of Israel. We're returning as Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, Issachar, Naphtali, Zebulon. Everybody understand that? Yes, this is the prophecy of what? This, the Jew can't touch us with this. They don't want to, they can't deal with us. Read. And he shall stand and feed in the strength of the Lord mm -hmm. and the majesty of the name of the Lord is God. And they shall abide, for now shall he be great unto the ends of the earth. Read. And this man shall be the peace when the Assyrians shall come into our land. So Christ is our peace when the Assyrians shall come into our land. That's talking about white folks. 1948. It happened in 70 AD. It happened during the time of Persia, but also 1948. Come on. And when he shall tread in our palaces, then shall we raise against some seven shepherds and eight principal men. Who are these seven shepherds and eight principal men? Leon, real quick. Second Ezra 1. 38 to 40, please. Y'all don't know who y'all dealing with. The men are back in the regeneration. Second Edges chapter 1, verse 38. And now, brother, behold, with glory, and see the people that cometh from the east, unto whom I will give for leaders Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Hosea, Amos, and Micah, Joel, Obadiah, and Jonah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zachari Zechariah, and Malachi, which is called also an angel of the Lord. That's 15 names right there, brothers. That's 15. They're going back now to Micah. V 5 and 5. Micah 5 and 5. And this man shall be the peace when the Assyrians shall come into our land. And when he shall tread in our places. Then palaces, shall palaces. Palaces. Then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men. That verse right there is, is so much. It's centuries in there. That one verse is time because we're waking up now. But they took the land way back then. Christ was our peace way back then. We don't. And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword. That's on the other side. Watch this. And the land of Nimrod and the entrances thereof. The land of Nimrod is here, Babylon. So the sword we're using here is this. Give me that Hebrews 412. Come on, Hebrews 4 and 12, Leon. Hebrews 4 and 12, Leon. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's right. So Sister uh, Lova, poet, Lova, what was her name? Tova? We'll sit down with you and talk, but we're going to use the Bible. We'll sit right. down with anybody. We're going to use the Bible. We're not going to use history books. We're going to stay in the Torah, the Tanakh, the New Testament. We're going to stay as it is written. Read on. Let's go back, Leon. Micah chapter 5 and 6. And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword, and the land of Nimrod and the entrances thereof. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian when he cometh into our land, and when he treadeth within our borders. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people. Now listen good to this. This is on the other side now. For any brother that might be crazy, this is on the other side. Come on, when Babylon is destroyed. Come on. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as the dew from the Lord, as the showers upon the grass that tarrieth not for man. So we're going to cover everywhere. Go ahead. Nor waiteth for the sons of men. Mm -hmm. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of many people, as a lion among the beasts of the forest. What can a beast of the forest do to a lion? No. Nothing but be food. Go ahead. As a young lion. Not an old lion. It says as a young lion. Go ahead. As a young lion amongst the flocks of sheep. She can't do nothing to lions. Go ahead. Who, if he go through, both treadeth down and teareth in pieces. And none can deliver. See, no one's going to be able to deliver the nations from my hand when we get that power from on high. Come on. Thy hand shall be lifted. Now, this power is what we just read in Micah 4, 15, when he said, I will make thine horn iron, make thy hooves brass. Y'all understand that? This is the fulfillment of a read. Thy hand shall be lifted up upon thine adversaries, 
and all thine enemies shall be cut off. All our, I'll wait for the old happy day. All our adversaries shall be cut off. Come on. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cut off thy horses out of the midst of thee, and I will destroy thy chariots. And I will cut off the cities of thy land. So all their weapons of war, their kingdoms shall be thrown down. Come on. And throw down all thy strongholds. That's right. That's why the Lord said in uh, Obadiah, they, I mean Mike, Malachi, they shall build, but I will what? Throw down. throw down. Go ahead. And I will cut off witchcrafts out of thine hand. See, white men be using witchcraft. We don't understand it. His science is witchcraft. God said, I'm going to cut all that off. Go ahead. And thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Yeah, hold on. Meaning there will be no more technology. No more television. No more satellite. No more cell phones. No more, what's them cars, them electric cars. No more rap music. No more rap music. That's witchcraft that they use on us. No more movies about... No more movies about pimps and hoes and drugs. That's all witchcraft to manipulate us. Where we at, Officer Leon? That was verse 12. Read it again. And I will cut off witchcraft out of thine hand, and thou shalt have no more soothsayers. Come on. Thy graven images also will I cut off. They're great. They're images of Caesar Bojea that always plays on our minds. Go ahead. And thy standing images out of the midst of thee, mm -hmm. and thou shalt no more worship the work of thine hands. Come on. And I will pluck up thy groves out of the midst of thee. So will I destroy thy cities. God said, I will destroy thy cities. Go ahead. And I will execute vengeance and anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not they heard. They never heard what the Lord is going to do, brothers. Twelve tribes. Twelve tribes. Twelve tribes. Unity. 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 And with that, we say shalom. Hallelujah. <laughs> Yo, that was some good stuff right there, man. <laughs> hey, blood, before we uh, close, I know some of you don't watch the news. There's a lot of stuff going on with the banks. A lot of these banks going to... I don't know if you guys are reading Deutsche Bank. This is, might be the next one. Be, believe it or not, the government is behind it. Mm -hmm. So, if I were you, just like Bishop Ben telling you for the past years about the food stuff, the only money you should have in the bank is actually money for bills. Don't, I'm telling you, don't get it twisted. When you go down, black people is going to get their money last. I'm telling you, don't sleep on Esau. It will collapse. Don't listen to us talking about, oh, the government is helping the bank. They're bailing out. No, it's going to collapse. I'm telling you right now, it's going to happen. So, get ready for it. If I were you, I get some type of safety deposit. Uh, I just say safe deposit. Because I know if you leave it in your house, you might get robbed. But I'm telling you, get it out. Right now, what they're doing, what the government is doing is, the Federal Reserve is behind it to make sure that you don't trust the bank so they can start with that crypto, not crypto, that uh, digital currency. That's what they want to do. They want to push that digital currency and they're trying to destroy the banks. And it will happen. Don't sleep. Whatever you got in there, Take it out and find a way to save it somewhere. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Don't sleep on Esau. It's going to happen. All right. Shalom, shalom. Most high Christ bless y'all. Let's get to the announcements, please. Excellent class, Bishop. All praise to the Most High. All praise to the Most High. Make me want to go out there and push down the building with my bare hands. All right, bear with me. All right, get the first one out. Hey, so we out here in Laredo. Uh, basically, we out here to be able to, of course, spread the gospel predominantly northern kingdom out here, so-called Mexicans. But guess what? That Babylonian mind frame they have, we here to cast that down because just as America is heavily influenced 
Mexico, they got it bad out here too. So we out here, all right? The prophets is out here. All praise them. Estamos aquí en Laredo, Texas. Estamos enseñando a nuestra gente lo que se llama mexicano. Que ellos son de tribu de Isaacar, de la nación de Israel. Mucho de nuestra gente tiene la mente de Babilonia, pero nosotros vamos a hacer el trabajo de Dios. Nosotros somos siempre serios de Dios y vamos a enseñar la palabra. Y bueno, todo. All praises, IUIC Houston and San Antonio traveled to the border of Laredo, Texas to wake up the northern kingdom of Israel and cast down the Babylonian mindset of our people. The word went out and many were receptive. Lord's will, they repent and the mission con as the mission continues. Am I looking at that right? Is it two? Oh, never mind. Let's get Denver. Well, through oral tradition, we were told since we were young about us, or about my great grandfather being a captive. Yeah. Whoa. Wait, wait, wait. Why am I even <laughs> running back? I don't know. Man, it's a million ways I can flip that. Send me acting like that. I need that. Temptation, I don't need that. Just throwing up, really need feedback. Time to get the cue to man. Tell me where the keys at. Oh. Cutting him, Joseph. Put him like Moses. Oh, oh, Pharaoh, leave. Uh -huh. his poses. Give him no roses. Oh, osmosis. Let me free. Oh, yeah. Penny on the dollar. He the with a collar. I went out father. You and his pasta. Burn your kava. Send in your father. Breaks in the arbor. Running back lava. Uh -huh. You the rhyme. Are you going to the track out? Uh -huh. They televised so you know we getting back. Slaves, name of what do you call Native Indian captives, to the censor, slaves. All for me. So, for all these people that say Native Americans weren't slaves, they were slaves, man. Prophets of the IUIC Denver hit a Native American museum to uncover the atrocities that America has done to them. Slavery, bondage, and slave ships were uncovered, proving the curses are real and they fit them. Stay tuned for more information coming out. All right. Uh, and Sonata promo. Ya llegaron los profetas con la Biblia en la mano, yo no ocupo usar armas, con la Biblia estoy tirando, la mirada hace frente, yo no miro para abajo, el reino lo tomaremos, lo tenemos destinado. Ya llegaron los profetas con la Biblia en la mano, yo no ocupo usar armas, con la Biblia estoy tirando, la mirada hace frente, yo no miro para abajo, el reino lo tomaremos, lo tenemos destinado. When we come in, we be coming, prophesying ain't no slumming, on the hedges and the roads, to compel the law, so preaching out it all. All praise to hey, the Most High. We got high. some heavy hitters out there, bro. All praise to the Most High. They're doing a very good job. The brothers are very diligent. Uh, they're putting in the work on social media, going out in the street. All praise to the Most High. All right, let's get a hey, uh, hey, brothers and sisters. Uh, regardless what I uh, what I say earlier, regardless what I say earlier, just all I'm going to say is be mindful of the system. Keep your eyes on the news. That's what I'm going to tell you. I got I got to sit like this, clear out because I know how Israel think. Keep your eyes on the news. Don't you remember the scripture say Christ says, uh, uh, "Watch and pray." Keep your eyes on the news because things is gonna go is gonna happen. All right. All right. All right. Let's get the uh, IUIC DC Hour of Power TV. You got the link? But, but you know what's beautiful about this? Mm -hmm. This is Black History, so-called Black wow. History Month, the shortest month 
in, 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 yeah. in the on, on the calendar. Yeah. 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 That's, that's cool, right? Um, our people. When you bring them what this book actually says, mm. they get very upset at you. The Bible says he knows how it works, tribulations, and poverty. We just had a brother get jumped to death by five police. You only see that happen to our people. We don't have no notes. We're just bringing the truth, but we, this is not Christ. Because the simplicity that, that's in Christ is written here in the Bible. We see that Christ kept the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. He kept Passover. Mm -hmm. He kept Hanukkah. He kept the Feast of Tabernacles on down the line. Yeah, it's, not, it's not gonna work until our people change their minds. All right, truth has been labeled hate speech, but the gospel continues on. Captain Anamaziah and the leadership of IUIC DC got to sit down with Sharid Hamid, Hamid of the Hour of Power show to identify problems and bring much needed solutions to the black and Latin community. You don't want to miss this. No, uh, now available on IUIC Washington DC YouTube channel. Like, share, and subscribe. Let's get Austin, Texas, please. Hey, listen, IUIC, Austin is out here on 6th Street today for South by Southwest bringing out the word. You see all manner of debauchery, all manner of sin going on, but guess what? The word of God is coming up. Let's get lit. Prophets of IUIC are back, blazing the United States of America. The city of Austin, Texas was blitzed, led by Bishop Kanai and Deacon Abiel. Hey, didn't they look powerful in that, y'all? Hey, hey, that sure was some did. powerful stuff right there. Yes, sir. Hey, y'all better fix your face, because we ain't going nowhere. <laughs> uh, get me the uh, 20th promo. We fall, we break, we fail, but then we rise, we heal, uh -oh. we all go. The world made us different, I hear stomping. Yeah. From Bourbon Street to Bill, Barclays, BET bosses, right. we keep it popping. Ease up, boy. Oh, Never giving up or giving in, we the prophets. Better miss us with that nonsense. Yeah. ADL, really? Huh? You look silly, boxing God. <laughs> you can't stop this prophecy. Yeah. Our aspirations different. This here kingdom's just a stop for me. Uh -huh. Bishop had the vision, gave the mission, now it's policy. Uh -huh. Aimed at exponential. Did we listen, nigga? Obviously, we are you, I see. Yeah. Why would I give up? Hey, that was a good slap. That's a good slap. That's a good slap. It should have been three of them, though. 20 years, y'all. 20 years. Get ready. All right. Uh, Joseph's dream. Hey, brothers, sisters, subscribe to IUIC TV today. Purchase and stream the multi-award winning film, Joseph's Dream. If you haven't seen it yet, you are not in the spirit, y'all. Don't forget to visit Matthew213.com to donate and support more biblical productions with accurate representations. We need all hands on deck on this one, y'all. So support, support, support. Get me uh, The Curse of Miriam, please. Here's another, here's another thing that we're working on. The Curse of Miriam. Donate to The Curse of Miriam today also at Matthew 2.13. All right, y'all. Uh, that is the conclusion of what? You have one more? Go ahead. Action.
Oh man! Fire! Fire! Listen! Listen! Fire. Listen! IUIC is about this work. I'm telling y'all, donate. Listen, you see where the money's going. Matthew213.com. Let's get it on. Come on. And that is the, the Deacon group. Isaac looking like the Spike Lee of Israel. <laughs> you saw him? He looked like the Spike Lee of Israel. <laughs> all praises, all praises. So, we're going to break bread and drink wine in honor of our Lord and Savior laying down his life so that you too can have life. Everybody got bread and wine? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which you were betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. All praise to the Most High for this bread. Many Israel, are you ready? Always ready. Are you ready? Always ready. What time is it? War time. What time is it? War time. Who's the king? Christ. Who's the king? Christ. What color is he? Black. What color is he? Black. Who are we? Israelites. Who are we? Israelites. Faith, patience, salvation. The truth. Faith. Patient, salvation, the truth. Twelve tribes, worldwide. Twelve tribes, worldwide. Unity, 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 unity. Never give up, never give in. Never give up, never give in. Never give up, never give in. Now finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And the power is mine. His what? His might. His what? His might. His what? His might. His what? Yeah, well, we taking this thing over, man. We leave by taking this thing over. I'm sure. Uh, uh, Officer Machiel, I'm sorry, we're taking it over. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs>